Greetings. I'm going to call the Concord School Committee meeting to order. I'll note that we are being broadcast and recorded. And uh, I'll bring the Concord Carlisle School Committee meeting to order. She just welcome. Really? Yep. Um, we have uh, well, we have two new members. One of whom is here at the moment. <laughs> David Modell from Carlisle, um, and his counterpart will be here. We'll introduce her when she arrives. And uh, we've got some business to do to seat the committee, uh, so we'll turn it over to Lori. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So your first order of business is to seat the new committee and elect its officers. Um, so we are. I'm requesting that. The Chair of the Concord School Committee call for the seat of the Concord Carlisle School Committee and for the election of officers for the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Other appointments can be made at that time if the committee has worked out assignments. We're going to actually do that later in the meeting. The appointments that require a vote we also do later in the meeting, um, but we would like to do, in addition to the chair of the school committee, the appointment of treasurer and assistant treasurer for the region. All right, so I would begin um, by moving to recognize Cortland Booth, Heather Bout, Yuval Ehrlich, Wallace Johnston, Cynthia Rainey as Concord members, and David Modell and Eva Mustafi as Carla, sorry. Mustafi. Mustafi, sorry. As Carlisle members of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we have a seated committee. Um, we now need to elect officers of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. I would accept nominations uh, for the role of chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. I'd like to move that uh, Wallace Johnson be uh, named and appointed as chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Second. 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 All right. Any discussion about this? Thank you. <laughs> Are you willing to do this if we vote you in, Wally? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of time to think about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all in favor then? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Well, thank you, Wally. You're now chair thank officially, you. not just acting, but officially chair of the so, CC School Committee. So Take over. Uh, we would accept nominations for the uh, vice chair of the Cocker Carlisle School Committee. I move that David Modell be elected and appointed as vice chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Second. Any discussion? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Are you willing well, to do this for us? <laughs> Thank you, David. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> and uh, we will now appoint the school committee recording secretary for the region. I move to appoint Erin Higgins as recording secretary. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Well, aye. 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 Thank you, Erin. Erin does an amazing job for us. Thank you so much. And uh, I take a motion for the appointment of a treasurer for the region. I move to appoint Allison Brake as treasurer of the Concord Carlisle Regional School District. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And we thank Allison for her efforts. Yes. So. Um, good. So okay. We are, so we, we now we have to open a public hearing <laughs> for. Do we have any language on that? Mm -hmm. um, we do. Yes, it's right here. I'm opening it. Okay. Uh, well, I have. Language for the vote. Do we have language for opening the? Do we just move to open? Yeah, the hearing? I, I really would just recommend it to you. So okay, I, I'll well, do that. We are opening a public hearing first on school choice, and I will hand it over to Dr. Hunter to explain uh, the, this topic. Just protocol. Are we opening up in, in fact two hearings, one for each district? Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I'll open the hearing for the region. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So annually, school committees have to review their status as to whether or not they're accepting school choice students. Um, the district, it, the law states that if the district chooses to withdraw from the obligation of enrolling non-resident students, the committee must, before June 1st, um, after a public hearing, which is what you're in now, adopt and vote the resolution um, withdrawing from that obligation. So that would 
be the subsequent vote. Um, tonight, I am recommending that we do not participate in school choice at either uh, the Concord schools or the high school. Um, that's status quo to where we have been. We have not participated and had students from other districts um, come to us um, for the following reasons. Uh, space and enrollment certainly being essentially at capacity and I'm living that regularly. We do not have additional space available. And there's not an equitable or adequate transportation system in place to allow all students to be able to t attend school in another district. And thus, some would be den denied the chance to participate. So based on those reasons, I would again recommend that we uh, withdraw from our obligation and that you would take those votes tonight for both districts. Any questions or thoughts on this? I think the evidence is pretty clear that uh, the recommendation is sound. I, I, yeah, we, there isn't much wiggle room to look at options on this one. It's pretty clear that we need to. <coughs> so, seeing that this is a public hearing, um, are there any comments from the audience? Seeing none, uh, I'd make a motion that the Concord and the Concord Carlisle School Committees vote not to participate in school choice for the school year 2019-2020. Uh, point of order, I think we need to close the public hearing and then we vote. Is that correct or much just be? I think you can close it and then vote. <laughs> mm. uh, and vote's the important part. Exactly. <laughs> so, so let's so. make sure we do it, right? If you had a contemporary public hearing. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> okay. So then. We will, uh, I think that's correct, yes. We will close the regional public hearing. And I will close the Concord public hearing on school choice. Uh, so the uh, yeah that's probably a good point. Uh, I'll make a motion that the Concord Carlisle School Committee uh, vote not to participate in school choice for the school year 2019-2020. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And for Concord, I would accept a motion uh, not to participate in school choice for the school year 2019-2020. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. That one's done and on. Do we have any public comment? I don't have any sheets to you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, reading of the minutes. I would move that we approve the minutes from March 26th and <coughs> April 8th, 2019. Oh, I would move yeah, that for, oh wait, they're both, to separate them sorry, to sorry. Like yeah. So, you guys can abstain. Right. Oh, yeah. that's right. Oh, we can One of the, Both of these were. You, no. can, you can vote for the minutes even if you want. You can vote for them anyway. Oh, okay. Or you can abstain, or whatever you, abstain. you feel comfortable with. Whatever. Um, these were both joint meetings, so. So I need, so we need a motion for both committees. I think so somebody can move. 4A was not, because I was here, I think. Wasn't that the first? 4 was the night of town meeting. Either. Okay, thank right. you. Yeah, so it was, so it was still the former committee. Yeah, yeah. That was the meeting before town meeting at sure. town meeting. Sure, yeah. Um, so uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the 326 and 48 meetings for both Concord and Concord Carlisle as they were joint meetings. Okay, I'll second that for both committees. Any comments or discussion? No. All heads. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And all in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are done. Okay, now we get to move on to the fun part. We have some recognitions. Yes. We do. Um, so we've invited um, and some Willard students, and I, I'll preface this by saying I put this invitation out when this was originally a Concord meeting, so it's a joint meeting with a elementary focus, which is not our normal practice. Uh, but we're really glad that the Willard kids are here, and I'll invite Mr. Lucy up and the teachers that are with them, and let them introduce themselves and what they're going to do for us. So it's only right and just that the kids really have center stage. Um, what you're going to hear about tonight is um, what teaching and learning looks like in 21st century. Uh, a departure from teacher-centered to student-centered, 
um, a departure from being told what to learn, how are you going to learn it, and how are you going to be uh, measured that you uh, learn the material to something that's authentic, that is inspiring to the students with student agency. Um, thank you to Ms. James and Ms. Hain uh, for their work um, guiding um, the students, working with the students, facilitating that the students did the work. It comes from their passion. When thinking about problem-based learning and when they're speaking tonight, I ask you to keep in mind their work with inquiry, authenticity, student agency and voice, and lastly, a meaningful assessment. You couldn't ask for more than to be assessed by the school committee, the superintendent, and your teachers, and their loving families. So, thank you. The only thing I would ask, is it possible for us to move them this way a little yes. so that everybody can be seen? Would it be possible Maybe come that over here? the girls could have something so that everyone could see on the active board? Oh, that did you see it? Yeah. Is that, are they allowed to present on the active board? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Are they in a good space? Definitely. Is that can right, can they be seen? No. We want to come in we here. Want to they want to use the active board. They want to use the active board board, though. as yes. a touch board. Okay. Stay where you are. Yes. Use it however you want. <laughs> um, so I'll move it for them. Okay. They want to. Where would be best for them? If they could step out here. If they could step out the here, then the camera and the audience can Thank catch you. them also. Perfect. Each Friday, we got together for lunch, and while we ate, we talked about the books. First, we would share our parts, and then talk about what had happened. If we wanted to talk about anything that we liked or were confused about, we would do that as well. When we talked about our sections, we chose parts of the book that appealed to us, or we didn't like. I'm meeting for this group and taking away our Friday recess, but because we all really like participating, it is not a big deal. Um, but for some kids, it probably would have been a problem. Um, once we finished started getting to the second, the end of the second book we read, I'm Malala, we started comparing the two books. We read The Red Pencil by Andrea Sears Pinkney and I'm Malala by Malala Yishuzai. We found that they both had in common the main character, who was a girl, did not have the same educational rights as boys. So the red pencil is written in poems, meaning that it was not very, it, was, it didn't take very long to read, and it was very fun to read as well, since you wouldn't expect to be able to read a story in poems. And also Amira, and also Amira is the main character of the book, and she is a girl who wants to have the same education as the boys in her village. And she, and she lives in southern Sudan, a place where girls don't, in certain places where girls won't have an education. And her parents had a split opinion. Her mother thought that she shouldn't get an education because she didn't have an education. So, and that was how it always had been, that was the tradition, so that's how it should be for her daughter. And her father thought that she should have an education, most likely because he had an education and knew, and knows how the opportunities that it gives. And we were also all very surprised that this was based in 2003 to 2004, which for me at least, we ex I expected this to be in the 1800s. <laughs> um, this story takes place in Sudan, and we're in the Jonjali, the terrorists, they can destroy her village and kill many people she loves. Amira is so shocked, sad, and angry, she stops speaking and drawing. When they flee to a refugee camp, um, she goes along, but she's like empty. She doesn't even like participate. Um, someone changes her life and gives her a red pencil and a pad of paper, and she finally starts to heal. It took us only about a month to finish the book because it was written poems, so it was pretty quick to read, and we read about 50 pages a week. The second book we read after the Red Pencil was called I Am Alone. It was about a girl who loved to go to school. She was grateful for this. Up until she was 10, things were not pretty smooth. She was extremely clever and intelligent. When she was 10, terrorists started to come, calling themselves the Taliban. They made everyone believe their religion was something in Islam. It was against your religion not to wear a hijab like a woman, and they would punish you for not wearing one. This went on for years, but it got worse. 
the bombing started to occur. Schools, houses, offices, shops, everything was being destroyed. It went on for so long that the people of Pakistan actually got used to it. Malala first started to protest anonymously, so she would write like diary entries, and they would be broadcasted on the news, and no one knew it was her until her friends found out that she said something that would only relate to her and her friends knew about that. And then slowly she started coming into the public eye. She started speaking to audiences and going on news channels. And then after she, she was protesting a lot, the Taliban really didn't like her protesting so much, so they threatened her. The first time it was a lot like a warning. They were telling her to stop, and if she kept doing it, something would happen to her. They threatened her again, and this time they came through with it. On her way home from school, the Taliban stopped the bus and asked the driver which one was Malala. All stood up and they shot her in the head. And then she was quickly, well, she quickly went to the hospital after that, but this hospital didn't have enough, like good enough equipment to um, make her heal. So she would die in that hospital. So she was flown over, which was a, a really dangerous fly because the people from England knew that um, it would, like, Pakistan was dangerous at the time, but because it was for someone so important, they knew they should do it. So they flew her over to England and she went to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Um, she went through many, a lot of procedures, and she even got part of her skull taken out because her brain was um, like inflating kind of, and she had the piece of her top skull, like the top of her skull, had to be moved to her stomach so her brain wouldn't break her skull. And then slowly after that, she started to heal and she, she wanted to go back to Pakistan, but they knew it was best for her to stay in England. Um, so after we finished both of our books, um, on Friday, Ms. Hain and Ms. James introduced um, like this project that we could choose whatever we wanted, and yeah. It was very open-ended. We had no instruction, no rules, and no limits. Like you could decide when we wanted to start and when we finish. We all choose. We all chose each each unique project. Um, Isabel um, did a website about famous women, and she like Marie Curie and Elizabeth Blackwell, and I think a few other. Me and Olivia wrote a website about Malala and girls' education, like statistics. And then I made a um, slideshow, like a presentation, about famous kid leaders and like how adults are just the leaders, like anyone could be a leader. After we did our final projects, NPR came out with a student podcast challenge, and we thought it would be fun to do that. We decided that both of the books really revolved around girls' education, and that would be the appropriate topic to talk about in our podcast. So we wrote about how girls should have the, an equal education to boys, and that it should be the same for everyone, because girls um, should don't deserve to be aren't less than boys, and they deserve to have the same rights as every other person. And based on what we had written, those are the parts we spoke. And we all included some of our projects into the script for the podcast. And over a few days and weeks, we came up with this podcast script. And we finally went to um, the Concord Carlisle High School to record it for our podcast. So we want to thank Miss James, Miss Hayne, Mr. Lucy and Mr. Roos for helping us be, make this possible. Mr. Roos helped us with the equipment for recording our podcast. Ms. James and Ms. Hayden just put this book home together, and Mr. Lucy helped with it too. Wow. Are there any questions? Oh my goodness.
Well, before we have questions, we want to say thank you. We are very, very impressed. We're impressed with your teachers and your principal, Mr. Roos, but we're especially impressed with you. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I would love to know, how did the idea of the book club actual, actually come to be? Um, so I can speak to that, Carl. So I think um, anyone who's known me for more than 10 minutes knows that I like to read and I like to talk, like to talk about what I read. Um, and Sharon and I were thinking of a way to interact with students outside of their typical reading groups and find books that were challenging not only in Lexile but in content. And so both of these books that the girls read are pretty intense, um, taking place in Southern Sudan and Pakistan, and both books that are wonderful to have that deeper discussion around. Um, and so we looked for students who really enjoyed reading and wouldn't mind the idea of taking on extra work. And so all we actually invited each of the girls to participate, and they took their time, thought about it, and decided to join us. And they've been with us every Friday during lunch and recess for the entire year. Wow. So on their part, that was the sacrifice. They That's took up their lunch and recess. But I wish all of you could be there because the discussion mm -hmm. was so rich. Um, and so present, you know, in our culture to think about, just to be aware of, there are some girls your age and some females around the world that don't have this wonderful right that we have to a free education. And um, it was just so fascinating to, you know, all of a sudden hear that awareness and have them yeah. ask us lots of questions. Sharon and I saw a lot of confusion and then a lot of anger and then a lot of yeah. passion as they sort of mm. explored these books. Um, and it was all second what Sharon said. We really were blown away by how intelligent and how driven and how kind this group of five girls was. Um, it was a very collaborative effort, so we picked the books, but the girls decided how much they wanted to read every week. They decided what they wanted to talk about. They decided pretty much everything else. Their projects were as open-ended as they described them. <laughs> there was guide. There might not have been instruction, but there was a there little was guide. guide. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but we did give them, you can have it on any topic, and it can take place in any form. Um, and it was great to see what they could produce with no limits. <laughs> wow. Of course. And it was so fun to go to the high school. Mr. Roos was just wonderful terrific that's um, right. with greeting us with bringing us into that radio station our eyes were all this is so cool <laughs> and then being able to make the girls feel comfortable and sit down and let them know what to do. it was just a great collaboration and experience wow so the, the girls had sacrificed their friday uh, breaks but nothing better than those books actually to demonstrate it's not a sacrifice it's a privilege to read and discuss books. Right. Right. Actually, our original plan for the book club was to read another set of books in the spring, um, but we kind of really got honed in on this idea um, and kept going for it. We kept going with it for the entire year, which was pretty wonderful. Yeah. And so this is the first time ever that NPR has held a contest, a contest for students, and they were overwhelmed with the number of entries. Mm -hmm. So we were in a category of fifth grade through eighth grade. Wow. Um, oh. <laughs> and I think they were just as surprised and because of the feedback, they're gonna to try to do this every year. That's good. Um, but it was just a great opportunity for them. And we used to talk about, so what audiences do you wanna share this message mm -hmm. with? It could stay here, it could stay within our school, it could go as far as you want it to go. So it was a great venue. That's terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Girls, congratulations. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And Kate and Sharon, thank you for your leadership. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Such good stuff. Thank you all for being here for that, and don't feel badly walking out. We won't be offended if you don't want to listen to the rest of the school committee business. <laughs> so we have, uh, yeah, we'll wait for the camera to come back. Yeah, exactly.
Well, before we uh, say goodbye to the outgoing members, I want to uh, welcome Evelyn Stoffy. Did we get it right? School committee. Yes. <laughs> well done. And uh, we look forward to a long association. Thank you for joining us. And we officially seated you already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. There will be an upgrade to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We all started with temporary name tags. Just get part of the induction. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we've been remiss doing lately is taking fresh pictures for the website. So oh, yeah, we have we'll yeah. to do that. Well, uh, we took yeah, a photo. There might not be anybody on there, but you would be. <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> uh, so we have, uh, sadly, a number of members who are leaving, have left the committee at this point, um, that we would like to recognize. And we have them here. We dragged them back. They are here. Three of the four are here. Um, so, uh, why don't we start with the one who's not here, uh, and uh, so Mary was, uh, uh, how long was she, three? Oh my three goodness. Nine years. Well, nine. Well, nine years at New Carlisle. Do you want to say that? Yeah, nine. So she was, she was here? She was Quite here for yeah, three right years, I think two, so two different tours. Right, yeah. And uh, so Mary's tours is, uh, did a t phenomenal job for us. and. I uh, was always diligent, and uh, the, I served on the policy subcommittee with her for a couple of years, and uh, uh, there was nobody more detail-oriented yeah. <laughs> than Mary. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think the policy manual is in pretty good shape, and we can thank Mary for that. Thank goodness. Uh, she served on the campus uh, uh, committee, which, you know, did, did a lot of good work uh, around the, the outside of the building over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, we have to thank for that. And there's ongoing work uh, ahead of us relating to the things that came out of that committee. So, uh, and then she just finished serving as the uh, vice chair of the region. So um, put in a lot of time and uh, has now moved on to uh, other pastures. So anybody want to make? Well, you use you use the word diligent. Uh, well, I, I thought uh, the mark she left uh, was just that—that that, uh, she did her homework uh, and set the bar very high for doing the homework for the school committee. And I know it took a lot of time. Uh, I don't think she slept on any of those plane uh, rides, uh, those plane trips. Uh, when she traveled internationally on business, she was carrying school committee work with her most of the time, apparently. Uh, so I think we're very much in her debt for the. Uh, the diligence that she yeah. brought to the community. Absolutely, I would say the same as I've said of one other person in this room. She kept us on our toes, <laughs> and um, she brought so much value and insight, and so often caught us on things that we weren't necessarily going to catch, and brought such great feedback from Carlisle all the time um, that it was just wonderful to work from her for with her, and. Um, Boy, the insight and institutional knowledge mm -hmm. that she continued to share with us, we will absolutely miss. Um, and we may get her back for a, a, a quick visit or a word here at some point, but we're not sure yet. So, you know, But we will certainly share our uh, appreciation of her tonight also, anyway. Any other comments? Um, so, uh, big shoes to fill. Our new members yes. from Carla. Good luck. <laughs> um, Christine, could you come up? Yeah. <laughs> Get on up here. So Christine Lear <laughs> is uh, still serving on the Carlisle okay. Committee, correct? And uh, we have uh, a, he served a year with us. It was uh, uh, a busy year. We had a lot going on and uh, certainly appreciate everything you did and the uh, things we had working for town meeting and you know, just keeping us surprised what the, the tenor of things were in Carlisle as we were talking about issues. And uh, as 
as we all know, these things take some time to kind of get into the flow of things. And, um, you know, just as, uh, as you were kind of getting there, it's, you know, off to, <laughs> off to other places. Um, but uh, thank you for all the work you did with us, and it was a pleasure. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to feed back, but I'm going to take the floor and say that this was um, an amazing group of people to work with. I'm in awe of what you accomplished, and I am so excited that the school systems for both Concord and Carlisle are in your very capable hands. And um, keep up the good work. I thought I'll be here in a year. Um, and so thank you all for your, your friendship and for the hard work that you do for the schools and for being so good to me. Well, you, you made it a pleasure. <laughs> you and I were first year school committee members at the same time, so we both got to share the balcony seats. As you know. uh, and uh, it was very helpful to me to have your counsel so you and I could check in on uh, things before we had to uh, burden the more experienced members. Uh, so thank you for, uh, for your support. Is that, is that a youth for a seat? <laughs> Um, well, I wrote down a few things that I wanted to say about each of them, and Christine, you, you already proved one of the things I was going to start with, which is that Christine will come in here and start complimenting everybody else about how, how wonderful they are, and that she doesn't give herself enough credit. Um, and, and I wanted to say, let's, let's get straight first that if you're to believe Christine and her self-deprecating humor, always giving credit to everyone else, literally this is what I wrote, this is what you did, <laughs> and raving about how smart they are, you might not think she'd done much herself. But don't be fooled, because Christine is incredibly insightful and thoughtful and just so smart. And you brought so much to us um, with your ability to listen, listen quietly to a full discussion of something and process it all and then very nicely bring up something that we all missed <laughs> and, and somehow make us even feel like maybe we thought of it when you just <laughs> nudged us to do that. Um, your creative ideas and your ability to make us laugh and to make us appreciate things are just are wonderful and you brought us so much joy here and compassion and insight and you will be sorely missed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One word from Carlo. Um, oh, yeah. Christine has always been willing to pitch in whenever needed. And we had uh, now two, two years running. We've had the departure of experienced regional representative, first Melissa, and then you now um, Mary. And we asked Christine to step in, and she just volunteered. It's a big ask. She did it. And this year we asked her to help. Uh, nurture our new chair, Melinda Gambino, who's a second year, and uh, you know we're relying on Christine to be the vice chair to shepherd that process. So we're trying. You know we have turnover, we manage it, and uh, I'm just always very grateful. Christine has a great attitude, as you all remarked, and, and always will just pitch in without any complaint. Thank you. Thank you. And you can't walk Brooklyn? away without having earned a varsity jacket. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, Mr. Bob Brom. <laughs> Come on up here. <laughs> oh no, Peggy, we're going to lay it to you finally. All right. Should I start this time? Sure. Okay, I'll start. I'm not going to read this whole thing because I printed out what I read at town meeting and that took too long. So I'm just going to give you the highlights, <laughs> which is that Bob is an incredibly humble and yet insightful addition to our committee and has been for three years. Um, it's, it, as I said, that it's a story that began even before he was elected because for the couple of years before he joined us, he was going to select board meetings and school committee meetings and, and so many other meetings in town, we'd run into him everywhere. And so he educated himself so much on what was going on and how it worked and, and what we were doing. Um, it, but instead of just asking questions and pushing, he said, I'm into, and he stood up and joined us. Um, and having that experience gave him and all of us so much. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to point out is 
just the word that comes to mind when I think of Bob, which is integrity. He has such incredible integrity and will always tell us what he truly thinks and tell us in such a respectful way. Um, and all of that that you brought to us will also be sorely missed. So thank you so much for all that you've done in the past three years. Well, it was, it was a great uh, three years for me. Uh, a lot of things were accomplished. Uh, number one, sitting seats <laughs> over for me. Uh -huh. And uh, also number two, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, a two of our greatest accomplishments. You know, what we had before. Uh, but also, you know, we, we improved relationships with the FinCom and the Select Board, in my opinion. Um, we created the uh, budget finance committee um, and um, we did a lot of work at the campus, the high school campus, and uh, that's now working itself through the system. And um, But most importantly, I, what I want to highlight is that you know we really formed uh, great relationships mm -hmm. on the committee, Very friendships good. really, that yes. I think is uh, you know maybe the most important thing. And and that manifested itself really uh, in our incredible effort for the the, the middle school project. Uh, and you know we had uh, we had uh, three leaders among a very thoughtful and cooperative team that really made that all possible. And. You know, I'm not going to name names, but I think you, the individuals know what I'm talking about, and it was it was just uh, great and um, to be continued. So you got a lot of work to do, I hope, <laughs> and uh, I thank you, you know, for the recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Did you want to say that? You asked uh, that we be kind. That's not particularly hard, but, uh, <laughs> uh, in your case, in fact, uh, that's a word that quickly comes to mind. Uh, uh, I'll mention again, uh, being a new school committee member, I was looking for guidance and you were very, uh, very ready and willing. Uh, I at first thought you were uh, a fellow who was going to be my mentor because I was <coughs> new to the committee, but then realized very quickly that in fact you're what most people would call a servant leader. You looked around this table and around the community and looked for ways to make everybody more capable and did it with the extraordinary uh, decorum um, that I think uh, is one of your legacies for this committee. So thank you very much. Um, well, are you sure you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's apart from my normal shy day. <laughs> I, uh, I can remember four years ago when you sort of arrived on the scene and conquered from wherever you had been. you have been here, but not quite a public, and we all kind of wondered, you know, what's he gonna do? Who is this guy? He was at select board meetings, he was at FinCon meetings, he was at school committee meetings. And, um, we didn't know if we were being audited for something or not. <laughs> um, and then I got a phone call one day and said you'd ask me to come have coffee, and uh, you had told me of your decision to run for school committee. Um, and, uh, in one of what have not been a lot of contested uh, races, and uh, and that's always a, a you know that's a real challenge to make that decision to uh, to serve and to to run uh, in contested races, and uh, you know we all wish that there were more of those because it creates a dialogue that we often don't get uh, and voters don't get uh, when we when we have uncontested races. So, uh, first, my hat's off to you for doing that. Uh, I have to chastise you for leaving after one turn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just when we were getting you trained up. Um, but no, the, you, you really did your homework before you got here. And um, one of the hallmarks of our experience with you is that you did your homework when you were here. And uh, you were always willing to take on the chores. And uh, and always with a light heart, and I appreciate that, and I really am going to miss you. And oh, do I have another one? Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> and you are yourself a varsity jacket. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Thank you.
Okay, Johanna, come on, get up here. Now we get to talk about you. <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you zoom in on <laughs> Close up on Joanne. All right, who gets to start? I'll start. Okay, I will start because I've been looking forward to this because Joanna kind of created her own tradition. As many people stepped off and rolled off this committee, she would write them a letter. And it always started, dear departing member. So I thought Joanna needed a dear Joanna letter. <laughs> so, so this one I'm gonna read, sorry. But <laughs> this is the letter. Dear Joanna, this letter has been a long time in the writing. It is a letter of thanks and appreciation for all that you have given to these two districts, the committees, and each of us individually over the past six years. This includes a long list of accomplishments, of course, many of which Wally outlined for us at town meeting. But I'm gonna focus not on those, but specifically on what you have brought to us as a person. So let's start with the obvious. Thank you for the incredible, now that doesn't even capture it, the superhuman efforts that you have given to this experience that we call school committee. Um, the work, the time, energy, research, creativity, preparation, advocacy, campaigning, committee chairing, and even logging many miles behind the wheel <laughs> in the efforts of the school committee. The list is endless. Um, thank you also for your dedication to helping your community. Um, this is clearly giving of yourself is, and your time is not something you do because you should or just because you're at, you've been asked. This is something you do because it's who you are and it's so clear in everything that you do. And it really means a lot to this community because you give so much time and heart for the betterment of others. And that is really meaningful. Um, thank you for your determination. There aren't many people who can come even close to claiming the level of determination that you have. Um, now, now we'll be clear, this isn't in the letter, but when you're up against Joanna and her determination, it's not easy. But when you're working with her, you really appreciate it. <laughs> um, once you see what needs to be done, uh, watch out, because from concept to strategy to execution, you dive in and you make it happen. Um, and I will say, really, and, and this is important, working so closely, especially even on the middle school initiative over the past six months, I feel like we all, and I in particular, have really benefited from this. And I felt like we were hands working together seamlessly and that we couldn't have gotten as far as we did without that sense of teamwork. And it was really, really enjoyable working with you. Um, but life isn't just all about outcomes, right? Especially when you're not being paid for your work and outcomes. <laughs> It's also about having fun and the laughter. So thank you for the laughter that you've provided along the way. Um, you always came up with some quip about it in the let's be real category of humor. And uh, some of my favorite moments in working with you have been when your filter momentarily turns off. <laughs> but we won't go into all those now. Um, lastly, and most personally to me, thank you for your honesty and genuine feedback. At one point, you had the courage to sit across from me and give me some difficult feedback. And it was not an easy conversation, but I truly valued it and took it to heart. And I think from there, we were able to really work together well, and I've always admired that, and just been very thankful for the time that I've gotten to work with you. So, Joanna, in summary, thank you for all you've given to us, and for the time that we've had to work and laugh and celebrate together. I will miss you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> So it's sometimes said that uh, politics is the art of uh, wrestling with all the competing stakeholders and trying to uh, satisfy to some degree all of those stakeholders. Uh, but first you have to know the stakeholders and second you have to understand them and I think that's one of the true gifts you brought to this committee, in fact uh, you brought to the town. Um, and it stems from your love of Concord. So. That's been abundantly clear to me in my short time with you. I want to thank you for the, the ability to bring to this committee the uh, perspectives of so many stakeholders that we're trying to satisfy with such an important mission called K-12 education that serves not just those K-12 students, but in fact everybody in this town who uh, has a, a hand in, in what we're doing. So thank you. Thank you very much. And yes, you uh, to, to Heather's point, you make very hard work look fun, so, <laughs> look fun sometimes. It's so true. thank you. Um, wow. Well, uh, 
Uh, one of the, my favorite things to do as a school committee member was to speak about Joe Demi. And, uh, but the, the, what we've been through together is uh, pretty extraordinary. And, uh, you know, there are only a few of us who know what all of that entailed. And, uh, you know, having done the work we've done and to be where we are, um, is one of the, the most important things I've done in my life. And to have shared that with you and to have our relationship grow um, over the five years we've done this together um, has been, has, well, obviously, means a lot. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we've, we've been uh, on the same side of issues. We've been on opposite sides of issues. Um, we've left this room at times probably wondering if we'd ever speak to each other again. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have left after having accomplished great things and the, the high that comes with that. And, uh, you know, through all of that, um, I have always known that, as I said at the time, you got kids best interest at heart. Um, and uh, everything Heather said is absolutely true. You're a born leader. Um, and uh, you've taught me a lot. Um, I hope maybe I've taught you a couple of things. Um, but I know that, uh, you know, I will, I will remember everything we've been through together for the rest of my life. And uh, I'm sad to see you leave the committee. Uh, I think we are uh, less because of it. We will, we will grow into our new committee. And uh, Concord has uh, should have nothing but thanks to you for the amount of effort and work you've put into this this job for the last six years. And uh, I suspect you will still be around and still engage and, uh, and do some wonderful things for the community going forward, because that's who you are. Um, so, uh, my hat's off to you, my great thanks, and uh, um, I'm the lucky one because we're still working together <laughs> until we get a contract, and, uh, <laughs> until we have that wonderful fun. Um, but thank you, uh, both from the committee and, and from the bottom of my heart for being a friend of the college. So I wasn't really prepared to say anything, but I, <laughs> thinking and watching you and, and having come in here tonight, um, yeah, we've been through a lot, and we've been, a, especially you and I, because it's been almost the whole time I'm on the committee, um, and it hasn't always been easy, but we have, I agree, when you're in the trenches with each other and you got to go in the same direction and fight the same fight, you really learn to, you learn a lot about yourself and how to, how to work as a group and luckily everybody else was of the same mindset mm -hmm. and we got we got a long way and we um, you know they were people always ask me like that I like doing the job and what I liked about it most was that I always felt challenged and that, it, that there were aspects that were going to make me grow but you also realize that you start to earn friendships and respect and um, and re in relationships that they're sort of, you know, unexpected and, and really are, while we did a lot of great work, 
that really made it rewarding. And you, you did articulate it well, Wally. And I, I think one of my favorite nights here was when we voted unanimously and talked about Lori to be our superintendent. And I realized we can do this when, when we're all behind the, you know, something and, we're, and we work together to get there. And that was a really rewarding night. It's really exciting, I think, for all of us to feel like all that we had been through, we still, we came together on that. And, um, you know, we've all been thrilled ever since and with Jared and um, that's the part I hate leaving, are the people. Um, my family is very happy that I won't be back. But thank you for those really kind words and just know that in my heart it's, it's, it's been some of the, some of the best stuff I've, I've done and the friendships and the, the growth of relationships is, is the best part about it. And I'm, you're lucky you guys all get to at least keep seeing each other. We'll do a little more until we get a contract. But um, I'm envious in a lot of ways. So thank you and thank you for the hard work all of us did together. Really Thank was awesome. You. We'll miss you. And maybe we'll think of excuses to drag you back. <laughs> That's okay. I make up. And I have always wanted one of those jackets. And you get a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. I, I want a hug too. He gets to give it to you. <laughs> you don't wear it. <laughs> Every time we gave one of the jackets, and this is a very Haley thing. I was in Jared as a man to leave you a jacket. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll be with you too. Not the late nights, <laughs> but our work, and hopefully still. Yes. Be hearing about it. And thank you both. Thank You're you. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna miss it. So where to find us? <laughs> we need a pep talk. Well, we'll invite you back in about a half hour when right. we need to talk some business. So right. That's right. you don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> there. All right. Yeah, let's do it during the New committee's report. That's <laughs> now. So, uh, chairs and liaison reports. Yeah. Do you have anything? I don't have anything. <laughs> have you done anything yet as chair? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Come on, Polly. I, I opened the meeting. <laughs> Um, as acting chair. <laughs> that's right. Um, we should mention um, and just pay tribute to and thank Chris Whalen, who is retiring soon, and his retirement party is coming up this Thursday, week, the Thursday evening, which I think people are invited to. So we'd just like to send a, uh, a greeting and tribute out to Chris Whalen as well, who is retiring soon. Um, for anybody who's picking this broadcast up tonight, there's also a public uh, appreciation tomorrow night at Tricon at 6 oh, o'clock. Well, it's Thursday. Is it not? And then there's another employee one on Thursday? No, the public one is Thursday at 2 o'clock. The public one is Thursday. Okay. 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 okay, so the public one is Thursday evening. Six. Six. Very good. At 6. Okay. It's supposed to RSVP. And it's okay. been so what, Thursday evening at six. A quarter century that he's been yes. with us yeah. and, very, and very attentive to the schools yeah. and the kids in town. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, other than that, we didn't have. I didn't. Have, we don't have liaisons yet for this group, and I didn't have much else to report as, as chair. A so. couple of things later in the meeting. But yeah, things yeah. that we can update on later in the meeting. So let's pass it over to Lori for superintendent. Okay. Report. Thank you. Thank you. And this, this is a pretty eclectic report. It's been a little while since I've reported and so many of you are new, so bear with, bear with a little bit of hopping between elementary and K-12 and back. And um, you know, there's a lot of work that's been going on and I just wanted to capture all of it. So our first topic really is an update on the elementary assistant principals. Uh, you'll remember in January, I asked if I could explore the option of reallocating positions at the elementary schools in order to consider in incorporating assistant principals. Um, the need really comes from the evaluation process. They are the only evaluators in the school, as well as special education, where they serve as team chair, plus everything else that they do. And um, we had recognized the need many years ago, frankly, and um, saw a window of possibility here because of a few, couple of retirements and reconfiguration of roles. Um, we've taken this process really slowly and very inclusively with the teachers, um, continue to work with them throughout the discussions on 
what their thoughts were on system principles, what their thoughts were on the specialists that were service, servicing them, what their thoughts were on external and in, internal possibilities to fill those roles. And it's really been an ongoing, pretty intimate dialogue since January, which is why you haven't heard from me, because we were in a place, I'm not quite sure how we were gonna land, and if we were gonna end up with a conclusion that this really was a good idea. Um, I think we're to the point tonight where we're pretty, we think it is a good idea. Um, we've vetted those different roles and the way we <coughs> run the schools and the ways in which we service kids, first and foremost. Um, and we actually put a posting up internally to see who the internal candidates were. Um, we then had interview committees um, begin to interview those. Two out of three have concluded the third ones this week. So all three schools will run that process. Um, and it's feeling like thus far, at least the first two schools have felt very, really great about the opportunity here with the internal candidate and the shift of role that that person would bring to them um, while we share with them a plan for coverage of whatever role that they had. Um, so this is not quite cost neutral, but pretty close um, in terms of just reallocating who's doing what. Um, it is a second administrator. I certainly acknowledge that. Um, that was by design because our evaluators have to be of that certification and uh, either a supervisor or a principal or assistant principal. Um, and so I think tonight I'm here to give you any more information that you'd like. We are comfortable. The CTA has given us positive feedback, the teachers throughout the process. And I'll be honest, like, we didn't start in the perfect place. We had a few hard discussions at the beginning of this to talk through concerns and questions and process and really dialogue through. And I think we're better for having had so much of first kind of hard conversations and then really informative conversations with each other. Uh, but I think we're in a place where we're like really excited about what this opportunity brings. Um, the principals are excited about it. Naomi's been engaged at Alcott, so she's aware of what's happening and has had um, a phone interview and <laughs> been part of the decision. Um, so we're looking for permission to reconfigure the roles and create these assistant principalships and then that last stage of the process would go forward where the principals would recommend this the people to me and I would meet with them and we'd go forward with offering contracts and such. So it really is a discussion for tonight for you to give me feedback on whether um, we finish and continue the process and um, go forward with this if you have other questions and concerns we need to consider. I uh, go for it. One, one question I have just in the uh, structure of this because people are coming from inside the building. Right. Um, right obviously are going to be leaving their teaching mm -hmm. role, um, which will, just in the course of our summertime work, fill those positions. And hats off to being able to do this mm -hmm. in, a, in a relatively cost-neutral way. Um, even though I think if, if we, we have been dealing with this yeah. sort of challenge for years. Yes. And uh, uh, we've, we've sort of band-aided things. We've, We've done things to, to make it better, um, but uh, I think I think this is a really good idea. Um, and I'm assuming that the people who are moving in to move into these positions, this is sort of a look, as permanent as any administrative position is. It's not right. We would, we've offered kind of them um, we've offered them agreements that they would not lose seniority and their understanding in the union should it not work. So. Mm -hmm. Um, protection to them that they're still whether or not the bargaining unit if it doesn't go forward. So I expect we'd offer one-year contracts. We're looking at an 11-month contract, not a 12. Um, we think we can do two weeks before and after school and that would be sufficient. In terms of the roles they've had, they're all specialists of some kind, which is often a position that both supports teachers through coaching and those that kind of an adult role as well as servicing students directly. So we're looking at which part of that role they may still maintain um, and which part of that role we're backfilling to, to, to do some coverage. Um, again, within, within the scope of staff that we have, we haven't had to add people to do that. So it's been a lot of creative thinking, I think, at each school to figure out what that would look like. Yeah. So I would just say I'm fully supportive of this, having seen over time the need growing 
um, especially in terms of evaluation. I mean, I think yeah. these schools need somebody else to help do evaluations, especially because we see that as so important. Um, and that evaluation process and the time in the classroom is important for the teachers and for the whole process. Um, so my one question was, it sounds like if you have, you're close in this process with internal candidates, that means that we wouldn't even post it externally. We wouldn't Correct. even need to post externally. It's Correct. almost quick done as is. Correct. That's great. Sure. And that was somewhat by design, because in order, frankly, to, to be sure that we had cost neutrality, right. we're, we're trying to see what we had within that we could reconfigure versus right. add a position. You know, my message to the principals and to the teachers are, I'm never going to be comfortable bringing three administrative you know, new positions right. to the committee in a budget. Right. That's just an exorbitant increase that we're never going to be able to absorb. So this is kind of the one opportunity, I think, in my tenure to reconfigure given some natural turnover that was already happened. That's great. Um, so we did feel like we wanted to start with the internal people. We also said that if the internal people weren't the right people, we would step back and reconsider. And we definitely would do that. It hasn't proved to be the case necessarily yet, um, and nor do I think it likely will be, but they they didn't just get an automatic right. invitation. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. They, That's great. There's three people internally from the elementary schools. Yes. Do you shift them between the elementary school or each one of them is going to stay in his own? I'm speaking about the evaluation process, mm -hmm. which they have to evaluate mm -hmm. people they've been working mm -hmm. with for years. Right. We've talked a lot about that. Um, and we've talked different directions on that, and right now we think there's benefit to them staying within the schools they know. Um, that, that was the initial concern from the teachers and also within the uh, candidates themselves. Right. So we vetted that, we feel, really thoroughly. Um, and the principals know they need to continue to be part of that discussion and support as people start to evaluate people they've been colleagues with. Um, so we, we feel pretty com we feel comfortable with that because we've had so much discussion with the individuals and with the with the teachers themselves. We discussed at length whether they would switch schools around and um, really came to the conclusion that the pros outweighed the cons to leave them in a school they really knew, mm -hmm. uh, and the school benefited from that, and that um, we would be very conscious and aware of the the cons and that we needed to really process them and continue to process them. Okay. Yeah, just one question. Uh, I'm sure over time we will hear how you're measuring the uh, the, the impact of this change. Mm -hmm. We're going to see uh, teaching competencies uh, uh, grow faster than they would otherwise. Presumably we're going to see learning outcomes uh, that are related to this. What do the principals tell you about how this is going to change their lives? Oh, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, the evaluation system alone, which should be an incredibly powerful professional collaborative tool with teachers. Yes, there are moments where it's about improving a teacher that's underperforming, but most of the time it's about professional relationship. And they have no time for that right now, and it frustrates them immensely. The professional frustration I hear in them, especially this time of year, as they're trying to wrap up and they're just paperwork churning right now and not doing what they wish they could be doing to give staff valid valuable feedback. So we're shortcutting the evaluation process in many places. When there's a teacher we're concerned about, that will be where our attention goes. But for the large majority of them, um, it's just not what it could be. So that's greatly frustrating. I think the other side of this is special education. It's a constant tap dance with them being the team chair in the building of what they can delegate and what they own themselves. And there's just going to be a broader scale of support there, which is going to be immensely valuable. Um, and then they'll be looking at what day-to-day -day pieces they might be able to, um, you know, split up and share, which the more time we split up and share those at the leadership role, the more time we're instructional leaders, and that's, that's ultimately the job we want them focused on. So. And, and some of that uh, uh, cooperative work is going to be building-based and need-based for a particular building. It's Absolutely. not going to be the same. Absolutely. across the three necessarily. Correct. It will, we'll have a flavor at each school based on the principle that's there and the way, the way they see the best fit. And what are the unintended consequences of this that you want to avoid? <laughs> uh, communication gaps? Uh, we're going to have to focus on that. Uh, I think some of the longer term work is the communication among the three elementary schools anyway. I think we're going to be able to actually, my hope is we're going to do better at that because there'll be won't be just the one principal that I'm trying to catch and Kristen's trying to catch and we'll have other other people to talk to as well. So I think that will be beneficial. 
Um, it's new. It's new. So we're going to be building, you know, working through a brand new position that hasn't happened before. So there's bound to be some bumps there. Um, but I think we've created a pretty open dialogue where we can hear what those questions and thoughts and concerns are as they happen um, and address them immediately. Sure, it's been right. It's not a one-way street between the few. Right. I mean, after 12 months, you can actually go back to... Sure, yeah, we could if it, if it isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to clarify here, tenure to date. What's that? <clears throat> Just the way you described that, it was like... Say that you said uh, the one thing I'll be able to do during my tenure here. Yeah, <laughs> tenure to date, right? Tenure, tenure, tenure to date. date. I just know. I don't, no matter how long I stay, I don't see me bringing you three hundred plus thousand dollars for this assistant principal. So that's the way I. That's how my uh, team heard it. Was I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so. But uh, I would I would think, and I don't know if, how much of this goes on now because this has been so hard yeah. to do because it is such a uh, but it's a significant, it's a huge body of work that has to get done every year. Yeah. But having these three folks who are going to be focused on evaluations, I would think would give us an opportunity to district wide be able yes. to collaborate on no how that's going and how it's working and you know, yes. just get better at it. And, and that was one of my goals this year, and I accomplished a portion of it in ways I hadn't expected and it became clear that the work on these this position these positions as well as some culture work was the foundation to making that an effective pro process so the combination of those the conversations happening about culture and allowing for uh, another position to support teachers means we can actually create the authentic process we wish it was yeah great Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, other highlights, and I won't go through all of this unless you have questions, I'll try to do a high level view. Uh, special education programming, we are really engaged in building in-house programs and that's across all of the schools, whether it be uh, language-based or social-emotional, um, right up through the 18 to 22 year olds that we're required to service after they've reached that age. So um, it's a really, active team process right now among the principals and the special education leadership and the teachers to look at what our options are. And so that, that plan is evolving through uh, reallocation of current staff as well as use of circuit breaker if we need to. Jared and I are staying in constant <coughs> discussion about that um, because we also are looking at savings from tuitions and other, recon other work that we're doing to save funds in other places. So we're going to get all that in one place for you as we get definitive structures in place and can put dollar amounts to it. Um, but it's turning out to be a really exciting exciting process that uh, is going to save us money over time, but also serve kids better. And it's happening at all, great, at all levels. And um, there's a really motivated group of people to take the energy that started and put more programs in place. So. More to come on that. Um, I did give you an update on English language learners, and this need is coming out of really middle and high school both. Um, we have a couple of newcomer students with their particular situations that are requiring a lot of uh, individual service, which is per the mandate. So that, in combination with the regulations changing to service preschool, is, is going to result in our need for an additional ELL teacher. So that might be a split position. I think it's going to be a split position where the high school will pay a portion and the uh, K-8 will pay a portion. We're still getting a little more detail on what the schedule will look like so we can firm that up. But um, we don't have any. We right. need to do right by the kids in the, in the law. Thank you for staying on top of it. Yeah, um, in that same mode, you know, enrollments and staffing, it's that time of year where we're just constantly watching moving numbers, um, whether it be high school enrollments where sections are a certain size and we have decisions to make about what we run and what we don't. Um, Mr. Mastrullo is looking at options for where, if he has lower numbers, what he might be able to fund somewhere else, and that's an ongoing discussion with Jared and I. Um, constant watch of the elementary schools. A year ago, Willard's kindergarten class coming in was low, so we did reduce a section. 
that number's crept up over the years, so we're gonna need a first grade additional teacher back to first grade. Um, we're also watching incoming kindergarten registrations, which are, you know, you do the registration and you know you've got a large percentage of the kids, but you don't know if you have them all, and you have to just keep monitoring it. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. There is one or two other places we might be able to reduce, so my, our hope with our fingers crossed is it's fairly neutral overall, right. but there's no promise of that quite yet. Um, that's why we have contingencies in the budget. This is really that place where we know we may need them um, and try to predict what's coming this summer so we're not doing quick things in August and, and that sort of thing. So more to come as those numbers firm up. Quick question, the, the ninth, incoming ninth grade? Yeah. Is the sort of balance between that yeah. point? Okay. Yeah, it is, thankfully. Um, we just talked about education evaluation, student wellness. We hosted, the high school hosted the local Challenge Success Spring Conference this weekend. We had teams from both the middle and high school there. I already heard some feedback coming out of them as they report back out to their um, buildings and what they're hoping for as we go into the next year. So I'm sure that work over the last weekend will be anchored in the um, school improvement plans that you see coming forward to you in June. School safety, we have our last meeting, committee meeting of the year on Thursday. Um, we've accomplished a draft, solid draft of an updated emergency plan and are in constant contact with the police and fire departments. We're looking at an app, so another out report to come to you as we finish the year's work there. I think we've just elevated the focus in a way that needed to happen. So I think if nothing else, that was accomplished um, while we look at, you know, concrete outcomes of apps and plans and security cameras and things like that, but the discussion of how we operate in a secure way is already awareness higher. Is um, you know, police chiefs are already talking to me about the new middle school as should we have a successful vote and be working on that scheme, schematic design this summer. So, um, that leads into the middle school facility as we talk on the immense amount of work going on there over the summer. We were at their staff meeting this afternoon and um, We've taken on a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's all in line up with the move between teachers and painting and rugs, and it's all set up all the way to the master schedule. Teachers are going to know know their schedules with students actually placed in it by Friday. Immense amount of work going on there, but all really exciting and forward moving. So, cultural proficiency. I think you know I looking forward to this ongoing dialogue. We've had, again, more things happen that are now coming from other directions that aren't necessarily administratively initiated. Debbie Irving, um, the <coughs> High School Parents Association, hosted her as author, and that was very well received. A very thoughtful dinner happened, and then her presentation afterwards. Um, other opportunities, like a documentary, documentary about METCO, and when we were through the work we're doing and sharing that with Medco Inc. when this this production company, really formal professional pr production company, rolls out the documentary in the fall, they've asked if they can come do it at CC. So we're starting to get a bigger picture um, rapport out in the, the world at large as a district that cares about this and wants to have these conversations. We need to keep having them, there's no question. We still have plenty of work to do. Uh, but it's exciting to watch it build from yeah. a lot of different directions. Right. Um, yeah. Cultural proficiency. I've attended a presentation as a member of the SAC mm -hmm. um, of Medco and mm -hmm. uh, Principal Mastrudo. Uh, there is a very, it, 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 it's very one way the program in the school. It's cultural proficiency was meant for Medco to actually, and the idea is that it would be a challenge, but it has to be a, cultural proficiency should be a, not only for- Oh, methods. correct. We, we completely agree with that, and yeah. plans that we'll be rolling out. So we've, we're, we've brought in that definition well beyond race. Um, certainly the, the Boston students are a part of our discussion because we do feel strongly committed to making them feel included here. Um, but we also believe we need to better serve kids of different religious backgrounds. This this month it's been about Ramadan and doing better with fasting students. And I think if nothing else, at least we're more aware of who's fasting and trying to better support them, for example. 
Um, in the fall, our focus with the staff when we open school will be on um, inclusivity of special needs and disabilities, so that will be the keynote speaker. So it, it isn't just a racial focus, it's a much broader focus um, about making sure everyone feels included. So that means there's lots and lots of work to do and ongoing conversations to have. So more to come on what our plans are going to be for next year. And, um, the conversation we had in this room this morning as a leadership team was making sure we start to really give our staff concrete, tangible how-tos of what is this what does this awareness and proficiency look like in my classroom? Um, and taking it down to a little more, um, you know, concrete opportunity for them, thinking on their own practice. So we have lots and lots of work to do, and I think you've all, you're completely right. We totally agree with that. Community and collaboration, there was too much to put here, so there's so much going on right now. It's so much fun. Um, if you didn't see the drowsy chaperone over the weekend at the high school, I'm sorry, you missed like Broadway, off Broadway. It was absolutely amazing. Um, but we got lots of other special activities, you know, graduations coming up June 1st, so you're all welcome. Let us know if you're planning on attending. Um, so senior week, the other transition, end of year things, it's a big long list and really really great time of year. Super busy, but uh, really fun. So, that's good stuff. Thank you. Uh, can I, uh, just one thing out of this that I was thinking about for uh, our new members from Carlisle in particular. Um, the, the work that we do um, at the high school uh, around special ed and especially the 18 to yeah. 22 years, which you would not experience in in your district in Carlisle, um, plus some of the, the MECO activities, it, it might be worth reaching out to Mike um, sure. to go up and, and kind of get a, a first-hand look at that. Yeah. Um, because you know throughout the year, we will refer to things like that, but you know we're all sort of living it day in, day out. Yeah. Um, and we'll just kind of brush over it and it's, you know, it, it's significant, and we're, we're making big strides in doing new things and bringing, trying to keep kids here rather than outside the district. But it's uh, it's worthwhile uh, having a better sense of you know what we're doing. Yeah, and I think that invitation is open to all of you coming new on the committee. Just let me know, and I'll work with the high school leadership. I think spending a little time with our med co director would be fantastic. Yeah. With our special ed department chair at the high school, give you a lot of windows into where we're at and sure. what we're aiming for. So just let me know, that just helps them yep. to oh, collaborate. Yeah, I can coordinate for you and um, set it up. Great. Thank you. I mean, you veterans are welcome too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> just walk around and nod your head. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and is that medical, uh, doing that and go uh, for special education? Is that uh, medical uh, leading um, at that or is that the special ed? So it depends on which part of the projects you're talking about. Um, MECO is focused on the Boston kids who come to school here. Special education is focused on students with disabilities. That doesn't mean those two never overlap, of course. Um, slightly different areas of focus in each. So we'd love to sit with you and talk through each, each piece of the work we've been doing there, um, trying to make sure we're serving all kids really effectively. Um, Moving on, we get to talk about a fun course. topic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do we have no correspondence? We. Oh, I skipped uh, that. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. I was thinking that was right after. Um, correspondence. No, no, no. I, <laughs> it is a fun topic. I jumped right ahead of that one. I have it listed right here. Um, so, correspondence um, from the CPS side. We got very one very nice email praising the K-8 band program with mm -hmm. just high accolades mm -hmm. and great descriptions of what an amazing experience it is for the students, which was terrific. Um, and then we just had a, an email and follow-up about a request for a potential agenda item that we're talking about mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, you've all had a question. Oh, sorry. Not a question. I just want I read the uh, email about the two middle school uh, 
band leaders and teachers and music teachers. I just wanted to actually to mention, because it was never mentioned here before, that the high school senior band had 10 days trip to Japan that mm -hmm. was extremely successful and then came here, won gold mm -hmm. in Micah and played in Symphony Hall right. last true. week That's right. and extremely successful, yeah. extremely yeah. well performed with uh, David, David Gresco. Yes, thank you. It's true, the high school, yes. yeah. yeah. That band too is incredibly successful. Thank you all for pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> So the next item on the agenda is Heather just said uh, <laughs> no for the something fun. <laughs> yes, um, this hits uh, two two fronts. One, it uh, recognizes uh, Sharon Young, who has uh, been here for been principal at Talcott for 16 years. Is that right? 15, 15, 16, a long time. Right. And uh, 15 or 16 <laughs> is is a phenomenal educator and. Uh, is retiring this year um, and uh, but you know something that we talk about fairly regularly which is uh, our ability to include everybody in some of the, the things that we do and in this case specifically trips um, and a scholarship fund to uh, to help defray the cost for kids whose families might not be able to to afford some of these trips that we so adequately offer the students. Um, at the high school level. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, and I'm actually, so, Tracy Morano is here, so I'm going to invite her up, since this is much of her brain Come style. join us. Uh, I'll just follow up on Wally's comments a bit, that, you know, I think ever since my arrival almost two years ago, as I bring the international trips for approval, there's been an ongoing feedback to me, very frankly directive, I'm going to say. I never thought it was just feedback. I knew there was a pretty strong order to try to work on how we were going to make these trips more accessible to all. And I'm not saying this is the fix to all of that, but it sure is a big step forward because the challenge I've had, and Tracy's heard me say this because she was sitting on CEF all of last year. and. That was one place I went for some interesting, for some help. Uh, we haven't had the vehicle, and I think that's much of what will be accomplished here, and funds, of course. And then to have this added benefit of, you know, really honoring a cherished principal who, in her way of operating, is so much in the mode of taking care of every child and making sure that every child has the same opportunities at Alcott and she sits in the most diverse school that we have, and that has been her passion work for the last 15 years, and it just felt like a, you know, a great fit, and um, Tracy was willing to, to lead it, and she's here to tell you what she's been thinking and what we've talked on so far. Okay, thank you. Um, so I've been at Alcott since 2005, so my commitment to sharing, and I'm still there. Like, I'm like, no, I'll be when you were going to school. Sharon and I are both leaving together, so, um, and I think she's done such great work at Alcott and really needs to be recognized, because it truly is a service and a gift to all of us, that what she's done there. And what impresses me most about Sharon is, is she always puts the kids first, and that is the one thing when I approached her about this, because she really, would prefer to retire with no fanfare. And, you know, she just wants to leave and walk away and I've done my job and Alcott is very much ready funding and we need to just jump right in. Um, you know, I, I think she's done the schedule, she's done everything. Everything is done yeah, for next I'm not year. not sure what Naomi's, no. <laughs> so, um, but we couldn't let her leave like that. In a great place. Yeah. She's in a great place and, and I just feel like Sharon needs to be recognized for her 16 years at Alcott. Yeah. Um, and Sharon does love to travel, and so this seemed like a natural fit. And as, as I was on CEF, there were many years that we just kept on getting approached for scholarships, and that's not part of what we do. So there really, as Lori said, there's no vehicle for any of this. Um, and I also happen to have kids all the way through the high school. One child has been on a trip before, and the next one's going to Switzerland. And my commitment to my own kids is you get one trip, because it really is, you know, they cost between two and $5,000, as you know, and for most kids, they don't even see it as a possibility of something that's even, like, you know, they kind of write it off. And the trips come out, well, I could never go because I can't afford it or my parents can't afford it. So we want every child to have the same opportunity. Um, and I do know that there is some fundraising done. I've talked a lot to uh, Mr. Mastrullo, 
to Senora Volpe, you know, and, and there's been a lot of um, fundraising done within the trips, but it's still not enough. Uh, we've sent a couple of kids, there have been some private uh, donors that have sent a couple of kids on trips that you guys have never heard of. Uh, even Ms. Mastrillo hadn't heard of. So like there's some under the radar help being given to kids and I think we just need to formalize it and really develop a fund that can be sustainable. So at this point, um, for Sharon's retirement, the, she really didn't want a party, but she said yes to a fundraiser. If it was gonna help kids, that's what she wanted. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we invite all of you to come on May 23rd from 3.45 to 5 o'clock. Um, we will be fundraising should this be approved at that point. Um, we've done some quiet fundraising before, so we do have some checks and I've met with Ian and the district is going to hopefully hold the money and they will um, provide an accounting to the committee that will disperse the funds and what the kids will do is they'll apply for a scholarship or there might be a guidance counselor that knows that a kid wants to go on a trip, maybe a principal knows, a teacher, and it will all be confidential. There will not be parents on it. You know, it's definitely going to be managed by the high school. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like yet. Sharon would like to be involved, whether it's a letter that, you know, maybe they write a paragraph on how this will change their life, or maybe they don't. I don't know. So we're not really sure how, what it's going to look like, but we just want to start the fund. That is I would just like to say thank you for coming up with this, because like Lori said, it is. It's something that we have wanted to address for so many years we've been talking about it and asking about it and it's such a need and it's such a wonderful way to pay tribute to Sharon at the same time. So just thank you for pulling all this, the ideas together into something real. It's great. And, and in a certain way it's another piece of the entire equity conversation in this town. And so you see this primarily as benefiting individual students who apply. Was there any discussion of defraying costs for everybody? So um, that and I'm not advocating. Within, no, 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 that happens within some of the trips. I've learned a lot about the trip process yeah. through all of this. Um, like for example, if you use a trip company, then they, that comes with a certain number of chaperones. So if your child is going on a trip, you're actually paying for the chaperones to go, which I totally agree with. Because any teacher that's willing to spend ten days in a foreign country with a bunch of other <laughs> um, So I think what what happens is that you know certain companies allow you to bank that chaperone money, so they might recommend you take five chaperones, but maybe the school feels like three should come, and then you can bank some of the money for future trips within the companies, and you can negotiate if if everybody uses EF, for example, then you can negotiate the trip costs a little bit. More. So it wasn't to defray it for everything because they're, they're just quite frankly so expensive. Sure. We like we want to try and back as much as we can and and really give it to kids that travel will make a huge difference in their lives. Thank you. There will be limited resources in this fund. Mm -hmm. There are many people in the community. The mechanism built in this motion is to do everything by the sole discretion of the principal of the high school. That will actually mean that the principal of the high school, on top of everything he's doing, will have to start doing due diligence on tens of uh, requests for uh, funds. So is that the only possible mechanism? So it would so only be a, a, a committee, so not just the principal. So it might be guidance. It will not be parents, though. I mean, I think the effort is That's really not what the motion is saying. Well, and, so, and Tracy didn't write the motion. We did. Yeah. So because we don't have the process uh, completely tight tonight, we're just asking for creation of the funds. You can either alter the motion to just establish the fund, and we will bring you back the process. Or the way we worded it was in the mindset of that it would be Mr. Mistrulo and designee, that kind of thing. But it's completely up to you what wording in the motion you're comfortable with. We just drafted a start point. I personally point. think that in order to do a decent mm -hmm. due diligence and not open the district to all kind, and it's must mm -hmm. to all kind of mm -hmm. claims mm -hmm. of favoritism and stuff, there has yeah. to be somebody, a social worker, that will follow the regular protocol of, yes. of financial Certainly. aid. You know, Certainly. And, and I, would, Certainly. I would ask you to come back with a yeah, no, that's totally, totally appropriate. 
And I, I think it begs the question, we really don't have, a, you know, I sent the uh, superintendent some other districts have policies on financial yes. aid so that it's very clear to families what the process is and confidentiality, because I'm sure that's a huge concern. It might prevent people from applying or seeking uh, a scholarship. And, uh, but I really want to thank you for this work. Um, uh, the one other issue I think it does bring forward is uh, let's say a family wouldn't qualify for the financial aid, but still this would be a huge, you know, $4,000, uh, you know, would make it so that they couldn't do something else. Mm -hmm. um, so we might not need to look at the uh, accessibility, having some trips that weren't quite that expensive, mm -hmm. you know, having more. So I was going to offer that when we got to the approvals for the trips that are on for tonight. Um, okay. it, and I've had this feedback from all of you prior members, new members, uh, we're gonna do a big picture step back on the, just all elements of the high school travel. Mm -hmm. There's so much great there, yeah. but right now we don't have the systems in place that we, we really need to, and I think what I mean by that is a process of, okay, let's let's inventory them all, let's look at the cost range, let's, let's look at the purpose and where they're going and why, and then look to see if we think the, the options are as flush as we want them to be and what needs to happen. So I think that's a charge for Mr. Mastrullo and I to step back. Um, and you know, I will admit to some extent that in my almost two years here now, um, I feel like they're just planned and coming at me and I don't think we have that first stage of the process. Um, and I think we need that piece so we have a big picture view. Perfect. It's an amazing amount of opportunities we offer our kids, so I think we want to not throw the baby in the bathwater here. But I do see the need to step back, build a process, build a vetting system, make sure we have trips that are opportunities for all kids, um, and just do that big picture. Well, it's a big project. It's a big it project. is. And I, don't, it's I don't know what are the, the procedures here, but I would consider, I don't know how it goes, to actually create a subcommittee of school of this regional for this, because it's uh, many people, it's lots of money. We have to think how to involve medical in it, mm -hmm. how to create guidelines for our financial guidelines, a big problem. So a subcommittee to, to run this process? The only thing I would want to be careful of is stepping over our boundaries of what administration yeah, should be doing. Can I, let me, let me, can I, go ahead and touch on this. Um, first, I, I do know that we would like to, to Try to move this along tonight. So if you if you have trouble with the motion the way it's written, then please propose some language. I think what we're hearing is that uh, you know we will definitely take these things into account. Um, and uh, uh, I'd I'd like before we go down the road of creating a subcommittee for this, I do think it's something that has been a lot of thought on. Let's let's see what comes back from. Uh, the administration and uh, you know, recognizing that we all are thinking the same way and we've talked about this a lot. Um, David, David, I know you wanted to make a comment. Go ahead. Well, yeah, it seems to me that there's three different issues and there should be clarity in how they interact. So from the little I know, which is just what's presented here, um, it sounds like a great idea and I do agree as a parent, you know, that it's a lot of money in these trips, and, and not everybody can go with them. And then there's a peer issue and all that. But so first is fundraising, and I have to say I don't know enough about the legality, and I might push that over to Jared. But there's certain specific rules about. I mean, parent-driven organizations like the CEF operate under a set of rules. Right. And Christine, you may know more. And if you do, please chime in. But so there's a there's a setup for it, a parent-led or citizen-led fundraising effort and then how that money is transferred to the school and how school then has oversight and that's a, a building, a trip, you know, anything. Um, and so we really need to understand that law because there's certainly lots of regs about even things like revolving funds where money comes in as fees and how it goes out. So I think before we get too far ahead that needs to be understood. The second item is what you all mentioned which is now you've got the money, what's the process by which you you know, oversee that yep. and how is that driven. Um, and I think the third one, which was touched on over here, is, you know, to what degree should 
the school committee have oversight into that process. And you know, again, I'm new to this committee, so I'm not clear on how you operate. But typically, yeah, I think we should we should understand that picture before going too far ahead. And again, you know, our practice in Carlisle is that we we hear a concept in a meeting, and we generally don't vote on it in the same meeting. We deliberate, we take our homework, we come back, and then we vote. So I don't know if you've already done this. Is this brand new, or is this an issue that's been coming around? So the, go ahead. The concept, of, the concept of this has been talked about. We have gotten kind of high-level updates on this proposal already. Um, we tend to do the same thing, not as a rule for everything. There's certainly been things where we've said, oh, we have to bring it up tonight and discuss it and vote on the same night. Generally, we try to do the same thing, vote something later. This has been brought up in the past, so at least for those who have been here, if you're comfortable, I would feel comfortable at least voting the creation of the funds tonight, mm -hmm. even if we put off the details Correct. until later. Correct. Um, does that feel comfortable, even though the two of you yes, haven't been here for it? For me, okay. and I wanted Tracy to apologize. I, I'm not yet, uh, it's my first public meeting. <laughs> so I start with oh immediately a uh, nitty gritty in my, <laughs> in my uh, criticism, but I, I should have started that it's a great idea. I'm very happy about it. I can even guess know how to do it. I will learn in a few years, and I'll be politically correct. Uh, and I just want to make another comment, um, just so you know that some of the other work that's being done is the high school is now gathering all of their trip information, so it's all on one page on their website. You know, they're going, you know, they're, they're going back a little bit, and they're creating, you know, pamphlets for parents so at the beginning of the year you know what your option of trips are going to be for that year mm -hmm. so you can start to make some decisions or if a child really wants to go on the trip they know it's cost four thousand dollars what am i going to do to get there we talked about establishing a fundraising club within the high school so that the kids can learn how to fundraise their own money and maybe maybe their parents have the money to send them but they don't want to send them kids can earn their way into a trip by you know working volunteer whatever it is you know, even if it's an old-fashioned bake sale, they can do that. So um, those are just some other things that have been discussed over the past, you know, I'd say a month or so. And so um, just should this be approved, we will then, this committee will, and on the committee that we currently have, um, we will write an Ed Fund grant. Um, they cannot fund scholarship, but they can contribute to a fund if it's established and same with all of the banks in town they all have charitable foundations so the goal is to then write the grants to all the banks and have them continue to you know seed this and really make it happen and, and make it something substantial that will continue on it's great and then you were talking about you're both mentioning kind of putting more consolidated information about the trips out i would assume at that point with all of that information and then when trips are announced with it will go announcement or information about this fund that you can apply to so that everybody knows yeah, be here's a trip and you, you can apply put together. right exactly certainly I assume there's communication with yeah, that's right now I'm like as a parent I'm, I'm trying to think back when when my daughters both applied for trips I'm not sure what I saw for mm -hmm. you know I think there's a statement about um, there is financial aid available right, but right and it's just a, a statement it's just a statement right but not much information yeah. about how would I yeah, go yeah. about looking into so that's it. the big picture view that we need to do and tighten mm -hmm. the procedures up and all of yes. that I, and I'm going to let Jared answer the revolving account question in a minute. But frankly, this fall, we were way back at insurance. Stuff we just were fixing up and cleaning up and making sure everything was tight on some of those lower level but incredibly important things. So there's just there's a process here we need to, to really um, just tighten up and get in place. And that's the outward process. We've been cleaning some of the inward processes mm -hmm. now. The outward needs to happen. And I take all that feedback with, you know, I, I agree with all of it. So, yeah. do you want to do? Yeah. Um, so, as you know about revolving funds, revolving funds can only be um, set up and collected for uh, things that they're specifically raised for. So, we've had some communication back and forth yourself and Ian. So, the Alcock PTG, as you know, is a, is a registered public charity. Therefore, they can uh, fundraise, solicit donations that benefit the scholarship fund. All the donations to the Alcott PTG are tax deductible in the same way made, uh, same way donations are made directly to the CCRSD. Um, if the Alcott PTG... CCRSD? Uh, uh, Charlotte Regional School District. Um, 
If the Alpha PTG does solicit donations for the scholarship fund, then careful attention needs to be paid in regards to the phrasing used. The PTG must state the donation is being collected to benefit the CCRSD Sharon Young Scholarship Fund. Any solicitation needs to be clear that donated funds would be dispersed to the scholarship fund and not kept internally. At the same time, the solicitation needs to be cl uh, made clear that the Alcott PTG is asking for and collecting the donation, not the CCRSD scholarship fund, which is different. So when they're collecting the funds, it needs to be made explicitly for the, uh, yes. this particular fund. Yes. Then we will figure out some sort of process um, but it will only be used for uh, for that particular reason. Of course, it won't be only the algorithm to be digital. It will have to go through all the other yeah. things. Yeah, it started there because that's been it's Tracy's liaison yes. and it's under Sharon. It will evolve from the Alcott piece yeah. that's and used in the high school. It, it's going to be a, a regional scholarship. And in, in any type of communication, it's always very clear that the donation will be made. You can write the check to Concord Carlo Regional School District with the Sharon Young um, Scholarship Fund yeah. in yeah. the memo line. And Alcott also okay. does accept online donations through PayPal. And so yeah, we have so a we specific were... button that it literally it will just be directed to that. Okay. Thank you so for doing we... all of this work. That's, <laughs> yes, uh, it's great. That's exciting. And uh, I doubt it may be premature, but is there is there been any Consideration of sort of a dollar figure that you're trying to reach. <laughs> I've heard a few from Tracy. I'm curious what she's trying to say. <laughs> I, I do. No, you are I trying to do well. fundraising. Um, no, we, we're just going to we're just going to do a great job yeah. fundraising, and yeah. you know, and hopefully some of the donations that we're soliciting, especially from foundations, if we can get a multi-year commitment, um, we do have you know some anonymous donors out there right now that will match funds that we possibly raise on that day of May 23rd. So if anyone's willing to contribute on that day, that might be helpful. That's great. Um, but you know, we hope you all come on that day to just really celebrate Sharon. Because yeah. that really is what it is all about, but the fundraiser is, is how we got her there. Because she really wants to go off into the sunset, yes. I noticed. Great. <laughs> right. uh, thank so you, Tracy, it, for all the work. And I know it's one of your probably thousands of projects after you got through the middle school play. <laughs> Um, but I would like to ask that we, I don't know if I make a motion and modify the motion to put aside how we disperse the funds. Yeah, I was just going to suggest what if I... I would assume that's next fall. In terms of any dispersing... Dis oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we're not trying to disperse no, any... No, 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 no. I think we're okay. not in a rush. My goal is just, just to be able to collect the funds. Exactly. Right. We just need to create a fund to collect it. I was just going to suggest the same thing. If I make the motion and just take out the... Um, at the discretion mm -hmm. of the principal part. Mm -hmm. So try this one out. I will move be, be, on. Oh, sorry. Just for still discussion. Do we insert CCRSD, Jared? Um, let me see. In the motion. Um, well, part of this on behalf of yes. Part of this is IRS uh, charitable giving consideration. Part of it's 71E and how they come together. Is that correct? Well, it's, it's going to be the regional side as well. Okay. Um, so, I assume. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, for pure clarity, absolutely yeah. put yeah. CRSD in front and of it. And it's only the regional school committee that's voting on Correct. this, right? Okay. Correct. Okay. So, I would move for the regional school committee to establish the CCRSD Sharon Young Travel Scholarship Fund. The Sharon Young Travel Scholarship Fund will be expended to support student participation in travel and exchange programs. I second. Does that work? I took out the, yep. out the discretion. Okay. It does that sound okay for does that sound purposes of why we're yeah. Sound good yes. legally and what we need and yes. all? Um, so any discussion on this beyond what we've had? No, just once again, thank you. Yes, yes. huge thanks. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's it. Thank right. you. Right. That's great. Thank, thank you, so you Tracy. All right. So Christina, Joanna, and Bob, you've missed us so much. You want to come back and join our next discussion? <laughs> okay.
Okay, welcome back. Oh, well, this is cozy. It's like a party. I love it. Okay, so the next thing on our list is superintendent evaluation. Um, so we've invited back our past members because, of course, it's the members who have been a part of this district for the last year who will participate in the evaluation. But I think it's also really important that we're all here doing this because this discussion, should, obviously, we should be consistent year to year, and so it carries forward for the next year as well. Um, so this is great to have as a joint discussion. Um, uh, let's see, last week I sent out a bunch of information, um, and what I wanted to discuss today, I didn't think of it, actually we didn't, I didn't print these out, which I guess I should have, but what I want to discuss today um, is the performance standards. So I had sent, uh, not everybody has a laptop, I didn't think of that, sorry, this is my bad. Um, but I will go through them. There are basically just four performance standards um, that we use, and those of us who been here for the year have seen these. Um, there are four standards that we use um, against the various metrics in the superintendent evaluation rubric. Um, there's proficient, which is considered the goal for the for professionals, and that's the primary um, standard and the most common one that is used. Um, it's considered completely obviously proficient and what we're looking for and expecting. Then there's exemplary, um, and then there's needs improvement, and then there's unsatisfactory. So what I'm gonna do is I sent out a DESI outline of this whole thing, but I will read through each one. Um, and we don't even have to have anything in front of us. We can even just to, to go through these and make sure that we have a common understanding of what each of these means so that as we go through the evaluation, we're all doing it in the same way. Um, does this all seem good to everybody? Mm -hmm. So this is from Jesse. Exemplary, sorry, proficient performance, um, which again, there are four standards, and I'm starting with number three just because that's what they start with as, as the standard. Pro proficient performance is understood to be fully satisfactory for the superintendent and all other administrators as well as teachers. This is the rigorous expected level of performance. It is a demanding but attainable level of performance. So again, expected, demanding, uh, but attainable. Exemplary performance represents a level of performance that exceeds the already high standard of proficient. A rating of exemplary is reserved for performance on an indicator or standard that is of such a high value that it could serve as a model for leaders regionally or statewide. Few educators, superintendents included, are expected to earn exemplary ratings on more than a handful of indicators. Okay, above and beyond. A rating of needs improvement represents performance that is below the requirements of a standard, but is not considered to be unsatisfactory at the time. Improvement is necessary and expected. For new educators, performance is on track to achieve proficiency within three years. Um, an unsatisfactory performance is merited when, I don't think we're going to worry about this one, no. but I'm going to read it just in case. <laughs> unsatisfactory performance, so we're covering all the so bases. so awkward for me. I know. Anyway, go ahead. improvement or performance is consistently below the requirements of standard and, and is considered inadequate or both. All right, we'll put that one out there. Just some, under <laughs> what's that? Have you seen under us? No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, I, I think the reason we wanted to go through this is, is partially because last year we all got into a situation where we had some different lenses through which we were looking at all of these. Um, I think one of the lines here that that caught us up and became confusing was in the needs of improvement rating where it says for new educators, needs improvement is on track to achieve proficiency within three years. Um, and I think that's where it can get confusing and some people can look at it to say, oh, well this means we're on track and others can look at it the, in terms of the rest of the wording, which means it's, which says it's below the requirements of a standard. Um, so I think that really, and then the proficient exemplary is where we want to make sure we focus here. Um, I personally read these to say that exemplary is, sorry, obviously exemplary is above and beyond. The proficient is what we're expecting and that we're satisfied with everything that's going on. And that needs improvement, like it says, is below the requirements of a standard. Um, and that, that that's somewhat disappointing. 
Um, so I guess I wanted to kind of put that out there and see how everybody else feels about those definitions. We're not talking about Lori right now, we're just talking about definitions. Um, does I'm not that ring true? To review, mm -hmm. but just to help me going forward for the next yeah, year. Yeah. Um, and one thing I think is that nobody at the end of the year should be caught by surprise. It's a, a continuous Thank feedback you. loop. And, exactly. Um, this is just sort of uh, rolling it all up. Confirmation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's sometimes a notion that there's always room for improvement. So we're we're gonna you know keep things low because you know, we want somebody to you know do better. And I don't see that as the case. I think uh, every year is a new year. I mean, of course, in the past you know if it, if you've been in a district for a while, then you would want to obviously consider their past performance. But um, I. I I just hope that that is what we're talking about. Is it's we're not sort of saying, well, you know, this is a B, but this, you know, you could get an A next year kind right. of thing. It's we're, just <laughs> we're not creating a bell curve. <laughs> I think it's important to actually for anybody that evaluates to remember that it it doesn't mutually exclusive to be exemplary and there is place for improvement. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Pablo Casas at age 90 was asked why is he still practicing and he said because I think I can get better. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, yeah. it's not mutually exclusive. That's and a very good point. You can be exemplary yeah. in what and you do above the expectation. Yeah. And still. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I think just to be sure that we all um, read the what I found helpful, but I don't know that uh, it, to keep us all aligned also, and I agree with everything that everyone said, is where Lori has highlighted her goals. Sorry, but you're who we're evaluating. <laughs> you're gonna, I, I, I want to okay. say, though, that you've done a really um, careful job of articulating what the goals will be, and in the actual document that you sent us, it's the superintendent, um, and it says LA, it's, it has Lori Hunter's goals. It's on the actual sort of official document, mm -hmm. it allows for you to read what a proficient rating means, an exemplary rating means. And if, we, if we're if we careful and we take the time to do it, ideally we're all, you know, kind of basing it off the same kind of, um, you know, uh, rating. And I think the, the concern last year was they actually, while meaning some of the same things, were actually pretty disparate ratings. Right. Um, and trying to capture that as an overall helpful opportunity for feedback made it made it difficult. So it, more than anything, we're trying to align what you've already articulated is helpful. Um, but I also found that very helpful as I started to look through it because we're looking at specific things. Lori isn't trying to do everything this year. She's made very clear goals and how has she done on those goals and to be clear that that's what we're trying to be supportive of and you know and continue the feedback loop and all that. Right. And what Joanna's referencing is the rubric that nobody can do everything on the rubric because it's like 137 different yeah, things. Yeah, just right? have that with you when you do the... And the, so in that email that I sent out to this entire group, I think about a week ago, exactly a week ago, mm -hmm. um, on May 7th, in case you're looking for it, um, I have the superintendent <coughs> rubric that we get from the state, but also a version that's the superintendent rubric, L. Hunter, and so that's where we've highlighted in green the specific rubric metrics that are a part of her goals for the past year that we all agreed on. And so that's how we can specifically look at her goals as they relate to the evaluation rubric. Um, and like Joanna said, it lays out very clearly what is proficient, what is exemplary, et cetera. And when I do it, I have them side by side yeah. so I can reference and then yeah. you know. And so you're, if we're all doing that, and, and I like I, I really liked how you did that, I guess you highlighted okay, or whatever. But Thanks to, 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 to where to um, you know be able to align what we're what we're actually raising you know, we're actually giving feedback on okay good. and as you say look at it as an opportunity it's a great opportunity last year I thought having a conversation and all the things we hope for and as we learn and grow and where we want to go with the districts and you know it's really like like everyone said even in all all the tributes and everything it's like we're working and, and pushing in the same direction yeah mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity for conversation definitely. Um, I'd be curious to hear from Carlisle members, both present and past and, <laughs> and new and old, um, how, how you guys do it there at Carlisle and if it's any different and if that would, you know, do you see things differently than we're kind of laying out here? I'll answer because Eva hasn't gone through this before. <laughs> so we've, we've gone um, 
I in particular have pushed back over the years at the mind-numbing granularity of the <laughs> rubric. Yes. Now that's why we don't look at the uh, the superintendent who preceded Jim O'Shea loved the evidence-based approach. She was all about that. She had big ring binders with all sorts of stuff. We, we've been through that too. Yeah, we didn't feel that that was particularly illuminating. <laughs> so, particularly in my case, I've been pushing for you know a broader view. Mm -hmm. We absolutely um, spent a lot of time in the summer session working on goals. Uh -huh. yep. Those goals drive the mm -hmm. superintendent goals. Yep. We spent some sessions early um, making sure the goals are lined up. Yep. And those goals flow down to the district and to the schools. Um, then mid-year we do a check-in. We we'll probably do that. Yep. Uh, and then as it wraps up in now, we really, you know, I mean, I'm, I spent my life in the corporate world and, you know, I feel we're a board of directors and as a board member, you know, if I don't trust the CEO, he shouldn't be, or she shouldn't be CEO. So. That it, you know, generally we apply that same logic. I mean, you've hired a superintendent, you trust her, and so the evidence is great that it's there, but it's not necessary. Yeah. So really try to sit back on the high-level mm. objectives. Yeah. Now you have to fill out the matrix. Right. So we do, but then those forms are sent to our secretary, and she accumulates them, and they're aggregate. And we, as individuals, just, again, focus on the top level and give our closing comments. And that's pretty much helpful. Okay. So that's what we've done similarly in terms of process, what we tend to do. Obviously, we all fill it out. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to have one person collect it and then do a summative evaluation. So take all the comment. Everybody so, writes individual comments. So one person does the summative. And one comment. of us will read all of those all of and do a sum yeah. one or two. We, yeah. so we have two chairs now, so Wally and I really will figure yeah. out how we're going to balance yeah. it. But, yeah. um, but, but we'll work on a summative evaluation that we can then read when we. Okay. Is this? Do are you there. doing the eval now or prepping for the? No, no, no. We're just prepping for it now. Okay. We're just, this is. This is really just a conversation to make sure that we're all on the same page as we evaluate. Um, over last week and this week, we're each having individual meetings with yeah. Lori. Um, it's, I have the surveys out, so I'll have that data to you um, by the end of the week. Yeah. So that'll inform you. Great. We do, I don't know if you guys do this, but we started last year, we started a staff, a staff, sorry, staff survey. Um, and like that's three, very helpful. Like a 360? Yeah. 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 Uh, no, we don't do that. Okay, but, so we'll have but we, that I, data also. Yeah, I mean, again, we're not going in the direction of too much data. But I think yep. um, I did, I've had conversations with MASC, and just like, just so you know this, and you may know this, but you've been on EDCO roundtables with me. Yeah. You really only have to uh, evaluate on the, the teaching. What's the first one? Professional? What's the first uh, category? The teaching and learning, the, what's it yeah, called? There's only, that's the only one you actually have to do. So, I mean, <laughs> right. If you don't like the other Instructional leadership, 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 yeah. If you don't like uh, the other ones, you don't have to use them. You can pick up your own or have none. So just as a thought process to, in the future, For if the you want to change it, <laughs> right. the school committee has a lot of flexibility about how it evaluates. Right. That's true. I, I superintendents. But my, you know, my thought is just, and it's more like stream of consciousness for us for coming into the, yeah. the, the more time we spend on the goal setting, yes. again, I'm probably Early on, right, exactly. Setting that up and getting it right, right. and being lined That's up, the, most important the rest part. of it, you know. Yeah. Just flows, absolutely. Just totally. And I, I feel like over the last year, the way we've done this in Lori's superintendent reports have been very helpful because basically all of her reports feed into the goals and objectives that we all had set at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting updates, not just twice a year, but, but you know every two weeks on her goals. So that by the time we get to this time of the year and we're doing one-on-one -on -one meetings, I go in and say, well, say, okay, we've talked about all of this. There's not much to go through now, right? We've, Which is the way it should be. We, we've got the binder in our heads. Right. We've, we've been going through this binder, so to speak, all year. We know yeah. Yeah. where we are in terms of all those goals. So it makes it not a big process at the end of the year because we've been doing it all the way through, which is the way it should be. Just a word to David. I have the advantage of doing the Ed call last Friday, so it's 
I can still remember. Yeah. I think it's standard one and two yes. is to be proficient in both. Okay. Okay. Um, so just back to kind of standards and how we use them. I, I guess I want to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page because really, and I'm just going to put it out there, last year it was the needs improvement one that we all looked at differently and some thought that meant Oh, that's not good. And some thought it meant, oh, that's fine. On the way to, on the way to good. And and I want to make sure that we have a really consistent consensus on this. Um, I I see needs improvement as something that really is a statement that uh, we're not happy with something, and something needs to change. Um, but but I want to see how everybody else feels about that to make sure that we're clear and on the same page. Because I don't want us each coming in with different right. ratings to say the same thing or the same ratings to say different things. Mm -hmm. So just to probe a little more, needs improvement uh, to your way of thinking might mean uh, a deficit that we didn't anticipate. Right, exactly. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that we're, that that's an area we're saying, oh, okay, this is something we need to be aware of because it's not going well and this is, this is, again, not unsatisfactory, but not to our expectations, mm -hmm. right? Whereas proficient, like, like you said, even exemplary or proficient, can still have room for improvement, yes. but be certainly considered proficient for this year or even exemplary. Um, so that's, that's, that's my opinion, but I, this is why I wanted to have a, a full I, discussion of this so that I, we, everybody gets to... And I think say. we're just, as Dave was saying, we're just sharing our sort of uh, reform thinking about this, trying to come to clarity and consensus around it. Um, I don't think that uh, the, the needs improvement uh, is taken out of context. To take it out of context is to take a September document and measure against that, not against real world conditions that the superintendent encountered over the course of the year. Right. So I can imagine uh, something that uh, did not uh, unfold as the superintendent or the school committee uh, expected, and yet it wouldn't uh, rate a needs improvement because we take context uh, into consideration. Yeah. Uh, what happened that diverted yeah. attention to it? Yeah, yeah I think it's too late, too late. I have to remember that this is the superintendent evaluation, um, and uh, you know, as opposed to, say, the district, mm -hmm. because there are things that you can attempt to do that, for one reason or another, don't pan out the way you expected. But you know, we went into the approach with a uniform. Uh, with an agreement about how we were going to do it, and if it doesn't, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that there was a deficiency in the superintendent's activities. It just didn't work out the way we had anticipated, and we'll come back at it. Um, and uh, versus, you have something that you committed to do and don't do. Okay. Yeah. You know, just. Uh, for you know whatever reason, um, and uh, or or execute poorly. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, you know, again, I'm not evaluating Lori this cycle, but and, and I am a hard grader. But I think that <laughs> I want to I want to right? push back on a Wally term about deficiency. It's not. I don't believe needs improvement indicates a deficiency. Number one, and number two, as you mentioned, Heather, in the beginning, proficient is the gold standard. Right. So we, we tend, you know, we're all A, B, C, D people, right? So we say, oh, exemplary must be A, and right. proficient must be B. Yeah. So that means needs improvement is a C. Well, wow, C is bad, right? But I don't believe that's the case. I think exemplary is a very special category. As you point out, Ruth, and you read the words, use it very sparingly when it really means something. Proficient is the A. It is an A, which means needs improvement is a B. So I think. From my experience over you know the years doing this, that's the mindset you should adopt. And that if there's something you want to highlight, and I don't think it matters actually, whether it's the district's failure or the individual, I don't know say that. the district didn't meet a goal or the individual didn't. She is the district, okay, for us, right? We aren't evaluating superintendents. We're not evaluating you know teachers. We're evaluating superintendent. She is the district. So. My view is, I wouldn't be, you know, sloppy about using needs improvement, but I wouldn't be afraid of it if there's something that should be highlighted. And it's okay to be, you know, three two or or five two or whatever. You don't have to all line up on that. Right. I think people can just have different opinions, and 
again, I'm not familiar with the process whether the, the members are identified with each square by name or it's just aggregated. But it's important to note that maybe there were some things that some people felt could be have been done different mm -hmm. that can be reflected in the comments. So that's right. my. Yeah, I, th I think my concern would be um, Heather is that we. We don't want to divorce ourselves from new needs improvement. Right, right. No, I don't want to make it sound like it's a... Yeah, like, um, because I think it should be used in the same care that mm -hmm. David was saying exemplary should be used. Yeah. Um, but then again, I also, it shouldn't be a surprise. Right. Yeah. I agree with everything. At the same time, and once again, I think I'm not part of this evaluation process, but you wanted to get to a... A standard that we can use that, for that years. We can use continuously. When you read the the, the instructions before, they said they were speaking about need improvement for young educated that can reach yeah. there for three years. You have to remember that you are actually evaluating. We are we evaluating a superintendent. So when you put need improvement, it's a statement. So you have to, while not being careful of it, you should use it only when you want to make a statement. Yep. For a level of superintendent, need improvement is a statement, is a red flag. You should yep. use it as red flags. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Okay. Joanna, Bob, you can say much. No, I think that's a very good point. Well, okay. I agree with that too. And I have a quick question. What's a good score for a superintendent? How many A's and how many B's? <laughs> you know, we all come in ex hoping to be proficient. I mean, if you're going to ask That's me, which I, guess, I actually appreciate you did. Um, <laughs> the goal is proficient. So, you know, needs improvement is going to catch my attention in a really big way because I want to be sure I'm addressing whatever it is. And I, I hope we'll... My hope would be I'd hear it early enough that I might correct it before it went to paper. And frankly, the public side of this is really a lot because other people may see the right and I'm not saying you don't do what you need to do please do but there is a place where it could get read in isolation mm -hmm. because it's public and people just see the ratings and they haven't been part of all the other discussions and I think that's right. among my colleagues and myself that's the really heightened level of something going out that's got some negative to it that it can just be grabbed publicly without the dial rich dialogue i know you would all give me to make it a really productive conversation and you know i want the feedback i absolutely want the feedback and hope we never wait till the evaluation process for that feedback right. um so I, that's the anxiety that comes from this seat it's sure. the public view and the people that aren't all of you who may interpret it in a certain way. So all of us are looking for proficiency, just like we say to the teachers, that's their, that's what they're looking for. Right on through the whole cycle, which has all the same similar rubric, it's proficient that we're all aiming for. And um, yeah, needs improvement means it is a bigger flag. I mean, it, just, yeah. it is a bigger flag from our, our seat to, to have it named that way. It doesn't mean you shouldn't if it warrants it. I'm not at all saying that. Mm -hmm. Just stand up. But, I, and I don't want to misspeak. I'm not talking about the summative, but I mean, oh, so you're oh, talking right. about, okay. you're talking about lots of little pieces. There are lots yeah, of little yeah, yeah. pieces, right? right. I'm not yeah. talking about the oh, summative, oh, right. particularly. The summative, generally, I completely agree, Lori. Yeah. But there There's are little there pieces. Are if you're going to use the little pieces, they get yeah. pretty granular. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. There's a difference. A there are some point. really yeah. granular yeah. ones, Those and then there are your overall summative yeah. ratings. Battery. Yeah. Battery. Yeah. Battery. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I've spoken too much. Oh, you're done. Come on. Shouldn't speak so much. Okay. So, speaking yeah, of granular, let's take a minute no, thank and you. distinguish That's what I highlighted green from not highlighted green. And we highlight green because as soon as everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. Right. So, you have to prioritize. Nonetheless, I don't think uh, Lori or the school committee uh, is implying that the others are off limits. No. Because they're on your radar all the time, mm -hmm. also. Although, uh, Again, I don't think it's a different metric. I simply think it's a different uh, priority, uh, and only that. So we're measuring in the same way, but measuring against a priority item or a non-priority item. Is that in uh, keeping with? Yeah. Well, I, I do want to. I think when we did goals, we we the things that are highlighted were areas where we had goals. <coughs> so you know, we've had in the past when we first started doing this. It was, I think the first year, it was like we had to do every single block. Mm -hmm. right. And one, it's tedious. Yep. Two, it's really not 
reflective of what goes on during the course of the year. So what we, if you, if you remember back to when we set goals, we, we used this and we said these are the things we're going to focus on. The other ones, you know, I would almost look at it like if there's something there that uh, during the course of the year something came up and it's in that space, I would file it away for the goals discussion for fiscal year 2020. Um, rather than think, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, that came up and we didn't address it just right, and I'm gonna go hard on that for some reason. I wasn't implying hard. What I was, uh, what I, the, my question was more: uh, Are the things we're declaring are effectively off limits for this year's conversation because it's not highlighted, or if we deem it useful? Is it uh, in play as a uh, as an item to uh, have a conversation? It's actually a good question, but it, it, because you're you have to rate all of those things the way the form is. Right. You have to put a rating on everything, and yet we focused on you know a handful of them really well. I would say, but the reality is, uh, I can't off the top of my head something like you know the ones about the laws and the regulations mm -hmm. and. Well, we're all responsible, lawyers are responsible for those things, but they've not really been a priority goal. Um, I think if you were feeling like something like that was um, concerning that you'd have a conversation and navigate that, if, you know, I, I just don't think they have the same the weight as the other mm -hmm. things because we've chosen that. Agreed. To, Agreed. to Dave's point of how to evaluate or how to approach the year has been synthesized down into more really meaty, you know, eight or whatever the number is of the goals um, and the other ones are, are important because that's your job but they haven't been like things to really go after and, and um, dig deep in for whatever reason. I think weight is the cr most critical word that you yeah. just used. Yeah. That those that we're focusing on are much more heavily weighted. It doesn't mean everything else is off limits and if you see something else you want to mention, well, but then mention it. Maybe it becomes something we discuss, like, well, I said, you know, for summer and future goals or something. Right, um, it's in your it's not like we're saying, yeah, right, you, you can't look at anything else. But the ones that we've highlighted, that we all decided together were the focus areas for the year, should be much more highly weighted. Does that? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm putting the question out just to get more, mm -hmm. uh, uh, more consensus mm -hmm. around what this means and how we, we each approach it. Yeah. Does that? Lori? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that does make sense because that is where the big picture movement is going. And I guess that's probably the part that's hard for me to give you a clean answer on because the big picture movement is all going to the goals, no question. Right. But that doesn't mean there isn't an awful lot of time and energy going to some of those ones. We didn't highlight different things in a given year, mm -hmm. right. more than others. Um, so I, I think there's, it's a hard want to give you a black and white answer yeah. to. So I think, you know, use your discretion and your judgment. So much of this is just about the communication of it mm -hmm. and making sure, and this is why we're having the conversation to make sure that I know what feedback I'm getting when I get the feedback. And that part got a little confusing last year. So we spent more time after the, the <laughs> we're trying to do it on this side of the conversation <laughs> rather than afterwards like we did last year. So I'm so grateful you're even, processing all this. There aren't simple answers, I think, is part of the other question. I know. Yeah. I mean, to what Johanna said, there is a form, and I don't know if you have to actually, if you actually have to give grade each line, but it won't be a viable discussion if we try to, to check 140 points. Each <laughs> district has to decide what for this year or for this stage of the district are the most important thing for the district. You have to agree on it. Yeah. You know, and practically discuss only those unless somebody will come and say there is a red flag. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, choose what's important this coming year or last year to the district and analyze only the things that are priority. Otherwise, you will never be able to see your family. Which I think is a goal. It's an important goal after you. I was making <laughs> Um, no, I agree, and I think that's the individuality of them, too. If someone yeah. feels like, I just don't want to fill out that one, check the box for that one, we, we, we had no experience, or we had one, and it was not representative, 
I think that's the individuality of it. And because overall, we just want to be aligned to sort of like good feedback and good mm -hmm. um, conversation around right. the things that we really all try to do the work. That's with. really the objective. Yeah. Right. Right. Don't lose sight of that. And it's kind of disingenuous in a way of <coughs> the desk, I think, puts us out, right? Yeah. yeah. To, you know, on one hand, as I said earlier, the school committees are, you know, guiding boards and should really not be that granular, and yet they give you this form that's, you know, just like, mm -hmm. and so that was, I didn't articulate it as well, and I don't have a form in front of me, so I was doing it from memory, but, I mean, that was really what we were pushing back against, and so we have, I think, winnowed down the form mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Carlisle to just the things we want to do, is we only spit out the things that we want. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. Right. right. <clears throat> okay, so does that, does that feel like a, Pretty common understanding now of yeah, where we are. Yeah, thank you. Does that feel fair to everyone? Okay. Um, then process-wise, we'll be going. I mean, I've, I'm not going to go through the detailed timeline now, but we all have it. And I think, oops, maybe I should open it up. But our uh, we're all finishing up our meetings with Lori, and we will fill in our um, individual evaluations. And I think the deadline to get them back to Wally and myself is the 28th, if I remember off the top of my head because then we are gonna present, we will do a summative, I'm pretty sure it's 28th, we'll do a summative and then we present the evaluation on the 11th, June 11th. Um, so if there are any other questions, just I reach out. I think that means a few of you are coming back again. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so okay. if you don't get it in by the 28th, it'll be a needs improvement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's satisfactory. Right. So if you get them in early, does that mean they're all different? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. For all you overachievers, yes. <laughs> You know, I just want to personally say how grateful I am for the conversation because I think this, we want this to be a valuable process and one that I do get the feedback that you are, that I need. Okay. So I appreciate the it's conversation. Because I, I haven't done it before. So. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm glad. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming back and then staying even after we appreciated you and then <laughs> kept you here for another hour. <laughs> you can go home to your families now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Can I offer that we take a... Uh, Five minute break. Sure. Yes. Okay. Let's do that quickly. Thanks. All right. Back here in, five, it's 8.23. Back here in five minutes. At 8.28.
hammering us back to <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So the next item is the uh, school committee meeting dates. <coughs> um, we have put joint on here. Mm -hmm. uh, Crest. Where would that go? We don't have it. Oops, we're missing one. So uh, <coughs> our expectation is not that every meeting will be joint, um, but we want. We've run into issues in the past where we set these dates, and um, you know everybody from Concord obviously uh, puts them in their calendar, and then. You know, we've got a CPS meeting on November 19th, and it turns out it would be really helpful to do a joint meeting. And so our thinking here was that uh, uh, if you could just, you know, put a pencil in on the dates that aren't CPS or aren't joint, so that if that eventuality comes, we've got a date that may be ready for prime time. I really want to push back on that point. Um, it's incredibly burdensome for us to make three meetings a month. I mean, we have our own meetings, very really long meetings once a month. Uh, I know that we've morphed, I think it's changed over time to the accommodating Concord and going twice down here, but I'm really against that. And I'm against it for uh, three different reasons, I would say. Number one, as I said, it's very burdensome. And we have a hard enough time getting members to join our committee and, retain, and getting them to join the region. And that's a big reason why. Number two, and, and I realize, you know, the next few meetings are going to be sort of a mashup, but I really feel we need to be a little more disciplined about covering region stuff with region and K through eight with K through eight, even to the point of the evaluations. I mean, it's, you know, because we are the, it's easier for you guys because it's all one district basically in your eyes, but it's definitely not one district in our eyes. So. Um, that's the second reason. Um, I'm not against at all uh, the notion that with a high school and the complexity that in two weeks there might be issues. And so I'm certainly, from my view, I'm certainly open to, you know, on short notice there's only two of us and we would maybe pencil in that we could be called, but I'd much rather see us approach it the other way and say, these are the regional dates and only if we really have to we'll call we'll call you in for a very specific piece of time on the other dates and then we'll make sure that we're available and you know to Lori's point she's made it you know there's a lot of reach out in one-on-one -on -one. there's you know no reason why we can't at least cover from a knowledge perspective the things that have to happen between meetings so that's personally what I'd like to see um, yeah I don't I, I think we're really pretty much on the same page the point of the way we the reason we did this was so and it I think what I'm thinking is that you, we've got these. You yeah. mark down that we'll come back at the next meeting with a list of joint and CPS. Um, the expectation was not that every meeting was going to be joint. Right. Uh, it was just that the recognition is there that there's a meeting. And if something does arise, um, then we will you know, the hope will be that, you know, obviously if you've got to schedule something on that day and that it was a, a CPS meeting, yeah. um, then we, you know, we'll have to find another day to do the business we have to do. Yeah, it's not, well, it's not so much, we'll, we'll mark the calendars. I mean, I, I'm speaking for Evan, but I will certainly mark my calendar and not schedule something. I'm saying I'd like to see it posted, joint versus CPS. I'd like to start from the mindset mm -hmm. yeah. that the first meeting of the month or the middle one, whatever it is, that's the see, that's the regional meeting, yep. and so just a more of a internal discipline to say, unless we really have to, we don't want to slide agenda items into that second meeting of the region. Right, and so. we will. And, and <coughs> the, the, in the past, that's what we've uh, that's what we've attempted to do. There will be, and I think, uh, why don't we plan to work on this between now and the next meeting? Okay. Um, and because there are some of these meetings that get 
near uh, decision points on budgets and that kind of thing, where we know we need that's okay. two I meetings. Mean, listen, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's so eminently I, fair as you move to budgets or, yeah. and there's lots of sub, there are gonna be lots of subcommittee meetings you know, on top of this, right? right? So, okay. so why don't we plan to time between now and the next meeting to sit down the three of us and sit together and determine which ones are going to be CPS mm -hmm. and which only ones will be joined. But it was really as much to sort of highlight that notion that because we have had uh, sometimes when we really had something that came up and had to be done and it was really hard to find a date because, um, you know, and for, for obvious reasons you'd just had, you didn't even bother once you'd put your own meetings down to consider that you know, that was there. So it's a, in the event that we need it. Hopefully we won't. Uh, and we'll identify the ones we know we'll need throughout the, the year to have a joint meeting every two weeks, but they're far and few between. Okay, and I mean, if we have to have that, um, maybe also we can be Take a sharp pencil to the agenda and make yes. sure you know, the region starts. We cover the regional yeah, issues. We, and then, we usually yeah, are better at that than we are tonight. This so, one's yeah. hard to do that way because right. uh, we had to do the executive session at the end anyway because of the seating committee. And um, typically, we we have when we do have, especially one of those, uh, well, on all of the agendas, but especially on one that's uh, been called that was not a joint meeting get the outside of the schedule to make sure whatever it is, it's done and you guys Correct. are out of here. Okay. And um, even if we have to conduct K-8 business at a joint meeting, right. we will try to try to do it at the end. Yeah, yeah, we, we usually do it at the end. We try to set the agenda. Yeah, dismiss the region. Dismiss the region, dismiss the region exactly. and then we can do yes. it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, um, also, just another point to throw out there. Part of the reason we've been, we made more of the meetings joint last year was actually some feedback from Carlisle members that there was discomfort that sometimes things were coming up in our K-8 discussions that would affect the region or affect the high school. And, and we also don't want to, we don't want to exclude you from discussions either that could affect. So when things come up, just because of the fact that obviously K-8 could affect right. things at the high school sometimes, um, think some things like that were coming up when we were realizing, okay, even though it's something that might be a primarily K-8 discussion, the Carlisle members wanted to be there and understand it because it could affect something at the region. So sometimes those things, in this past year at least, we started to move more into joint meetings than into CPS meetings for their benefit. Um, but again, that's that's stuff that we can take feedback from you guys on and see where. Yeah, I mean, each group is different. Rather it. Right. Ever exactly. has to go through it. She's just starting. Exactly. Um, so I can't. But speaking for me, I'm happy to be informed. Okay, got it. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean that's right. that's important feedback too because we yeah. can we can tailor it to, yeah, to the group. way <laughs> it's what it's you really guys want. And right, exactly. And as we understand that more, we can we can work Correct. around it. So um, does that work that we we've identified these dates? We'll yes. we'll come back with another one that's yes. joint in you know, joint days, yes. CPS days. Yeah. Um, and we'll work on those together. Yeah. Um, so there's no surprises yeah. there. May I refer to the specific dates? Mm -hmm. May I refer to some yes, specific dates? Um, I don't know how Sydney Stone the Tuesday is, but October 1st would probably be nice to move it to the second, if possible. Oh, is that the one that's October 1st the, the, Jewish, holiday, the Jewish, Jewish holiday. New Year? Right. So I've checked the how it falls on both Jewish holidays, the main ones, and oh. Muslim holidays. I didn't check all the others, so we don't have any problem with even Fitr and Badha. Uh, and the first could move to the second that would make uh, So October 1st is the only day that you recognize. I only caution you that that's, we yes. don't know when the middle school building committee is going to meet. And it could be Wednesdays. Mm. Right, what day of the week? It's not, it's not, it's, it will be a good solution, open. but it's not totally necessary because it will be after the holiday goes. I mean, what if you move it a week? Yeah, that would be much worse. 
Oh. Yeah, the ace is it. your keep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why we have That's right. Yeah, it's it's a, the double, double worse. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, because that's what it originally was. It was but, originally but as I said, and we moved it, it. It will be back. courtesy, but it's not necessary because it's the end of the holiday. So okay. we'll, we'll, we'll consider that when we're coming up with the second version yeah. of this. Yeah. Okay. Any other dates that... Personally, if they, because there is between the 1st and the 15th, there are two weeks, and then the 15th to the 5th, there are three. Mm. If we can move the 15th to the 22nd, that will be very nice for me, because I'll be able to attend. This is uh, October. So. That's October. I will not be able to attend the 15th, and it's actually another Jewish one, but not a major one. And the 22nd, I will be able to attend. And because there are at least three weeks either here or there, that will be my. But it's, you know. Like it's the. Still be good. And two, so then it would still be 20. two weeks until the November. Yeah. June 23rd <laughs> is a, after the year ends. Yeah. That hopefully, <laughs> yeah, but it creates yeah. maybe because it's the last yeah. one, why not do it a week before? Yeah, oh, yeah, we did that for this yeah. year, and I think yeah. we should put that a week earlier. Okay. And this coming July, I don't know if because it's vacation, if you can do it earlier. I think that's July. <coughs> no, we uh, <laughs> open for discussion, but uh, it doesn't <coughs> we, 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 our feeling is because of the. Uh, building yes. process, we should at least have a CPS meeting planned yes. in July. A day no, no, I mean, early in, in the day. Yeah, six, no, six, we, eight, and eight, one of the reasons eight, that eight, this is doesn't have a day in it um, is, um, and maybe the way to do this is if you can, if, I'm going to, this is what I'm talking about, a doodle you were gonna poll. Say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're going to get a doodle poll about July and August. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, uh, so the, what we've been, what we've found is late August is typically when we get the joint workshop done mm -hmm. because so many people are Scott, around yeah. doing different things. Um, but so the, that'll be heavily weighted in there. Uh, I will send out uh, you know, it'll it'll probably end up being, uh, you know, a couple of days during the two or three weeks of July after the fourth, mm -hmm. um, and uh, just you know put in what works, and we'll uh, try to identify a date that works the best. And I think there's really no reason for that to be a regional piece. That's just CPS. July. July. Yeah. The only question is, we've got action items or bills or something like that, but I think we're probably fine. If we have something, then, you know, maybe that's, and some of these things where there's, just, you know, one little thing that needs to get done, um, and we need to convene the regional meeting, we only need one yeah. member from Carlisle. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's oftentimes the way the conversation goes. It's like, I can't come, I get something, but um, Eva can come, so. Yep. And after the first, uh, attempt last time of Skype, I met with the IT director and we actually worked out and probably the next time would be better. Okay. And we checked the legalities, I think you did as well, and while somebody who is on Skype cannot be part of the quorum, he can vote and he can participate. So You have to have vote. a quorum to open the meeting. Correct. Right, yeah. 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 So, so they can join and they can, then they can present. So the, the, the idea is that we have to I'll, I'll at least try it a couple of times, I'm not here. Do, when you were looking at it, do we need as a committee to vote that we allow that? No, it's actually a town thing. If the town allows The region it, had to vote. The region will have, the, the region, region will have, have to, to vote. We're not under the town yeah, The town has a remote participation yeah. policy. Yeah. 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 Okay, but so why don't we, when we do, when we bring this back, we'll put yeah. that on the, on the need, agenda. And as the a region, do you need a quorum of... Carlilians, or you just <laughs> yes, you need at least four. Three, 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 three,
question. We had something we had to do, <coughs> and we could only get four people. The upcoming June 18th pending uh, scheduled meeting at 6.30, uh, that's this upcoming June. That's this upcoming June 18th, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's is, asking about that one, which that, we that, have on our calendar. And at this point, because we... We had moved it earlier from a week later, figuring, well, that'll be while well. school's in session still. <laughs> and it's not. Um, however, we're getting a lot of our work into the 11th. It basically, it's out there right now. I Don't cancel it yet. Don't take it off your calendar. But if we don't have anything we have to do, we won't hold, we won't hold the meeting. So we're just going to see if we can get everything done by the 11th and not have to have that meeting. That's right. I will. You can't be here. Okay, that's good. All the more motivation. Right. To get everything done. <laughs> and nor would you. David, can you be here the 18th? Okay, so if we need to have a short regional meeting for some reason, we can at least. The remote participants, the one coming in two weeks. The 11th. Okay. And the 11th yep. originally was CPS, it's now a joint. Is that accurate? Yes. Right. So that we could try to fit that, because that's when we're doing evaluation. In hopes of not, in hopes of not, needing, hopes of not needing the 18th right. at all. So I think the other thing to mention, for those of you who lead such fabulous lives that you're scheduled out into these months in 2020, mm -hmm. um, said, said please, one after you came back from Norway. Yeah. Please, uh, please let us know if any of these dates don't work uh, yeah, for you know, one reason or another. Let us know now and, you know, especially if it ends up being two or three people, we'll probably try to move that date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so are we another version to come. clear on this? Another version yeah. to come. We'll set up the time the four of us can get together and talk about that. And uh, yep, good. And then we'll get dates for July we'll and August. Dates for July and, and August, August is is typically a workshop where we talk about our goals for the year yeah. and objectives. Right. And I don't know about stuff. you guys, but in our summer meeting, the chair buys dinner. Oh, <laughs> in our, in our, in our <laughs> vice chair. <laughs> 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 Can you make a motion? Yeah. <laughs> it's a policy. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay. Next. What's next? Um, the list of committee representatives, which um, we're just going to go through. We're not appointing committee representatives tonight. Mm -hmm. We thought it was better to go through yeah. the list, edit it. We have some additions that I neglected to send from Cynthia to Lori, so that's my fault, but we have some additions, some suggestions, some things to cross off. So we want to just go through the list, finalize it, make sure everybody understands what each one is. Sure. And then um, over the next week, if each of you can send you know, your preferences and that kind of stuff to us, to Wally and myself, we will start to slot in what makes sense in terms of, Great. In terms of um, committees and representatives. It and can even be day or night. If we well, I was going to say, it's to good to get some go through, yeah. general preferences too. I would love to hear from everyone. You know, for some people it's easier evenings, others it's easier daytimes, and we try to balance that out so we get what everybody needs. Um, so let's just go through the list first and yeah. kind of explain what they are. Do you want to go through or do you want to do? Uh, well, uh, if I get hung up, I'll ask you. But adult and community ed, uh, actually, court probably ought to talk about this. because. <laughs> He he it it well. <laughs> this is an advisory committee only, uh, works uh, primarily with the, uh, with the community education director. These uh, are three-year appointments uh, to this board, appointments by the school committee, the regional school committee. Right. And as the name, uh, I guess it doesn't say, it's not a board, it's an advisory committee, to be precise. And I believe it... it it was meeting in late afternoons. I'm not sure when it meets. Right when now. I was a liaison, it was meeting at 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And it that was, was really more recent. Okay. But, uh, Got it. Okay. Uh, I don't know who the. Who the and Christine was, was the liaison Christine was, last year. I think correct? it was, yeah. Um, so that one will need to be filled. Yeah, but that is a daytime meeting. That's a daytime meeting. I can so know. Edco yeah. Advisory is the Edco. Uh, Education Collaborative, it's the meetings are in Burlington. Bedford. Bedford. Bedford yeah. Almost, it's Burlington. It's Almost Burlington. If you drive over there, you'll say, this isn't in Bedford. What are right. you talking about? <laughs> okay. uh, the, uh, uh, it's a daytime meeting. It's once a month. 
and typically once a month. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I I think they're very informative. Uh, it's an opportunity to go talk to other folks uh, from committees around that are in this collaborative about the things that are are going on uh, in their neighborhoods and. Uh, you know, comes back with some good ideas. Uh, some of them are a little more uh, training-like, but you know, for the most part, it's there's a topic or two and a discussion about them. Uh, the topics I think are generated through well, interaction they mean, they mean with members. It's a round table, right? You're talking about the it's round a round table. table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah um, but isn't there a different? There are the yeah, round tables, and then there's the advisory board. You're always welcome to go to the round table, and right, I encourage you to do so. This is actually I sit on the board of directors as a voting member. Mm -hmm. There's also school committee representation who serve as advisory, and we all sit together. And each district does it a little bit differently. There are some districts that really are only represented by their school committees. That's never been conquered, conquered Carlisle or Carlisle either for that matter. Um, and then there's other districts that have both. Mm -hmm. And then there's some districts which Jim and I have pretty much fallen in that we're, the superintendent is there as representation and there hasn't been as much regular school committee participation. It really is another business meeting like this for EDCO okay. with all of their business work, the collaborative and all the work that they're doing and the different ways they operate and policy decisions and things like that. And it's typically every other month on Thursday mornings at 9.30. Um, so I think it's one that you can assign someone to. It's one I'm already covering. I'm very good about going. And so I think it's, I think it's your decision if that's where you want to put your time. Um, you should appoint someone, I, for sure. But um, the round table's a round huge table's more useful benefit right? of your time. Round more this is going to be come okay. sit through another business meeting. OK. Yes. That's good to know. That's helpful. Yeah, for new members, and I've told you know my committee, the round table's pretty useful. Like, yeah. They'll set the agenda, it's not on this list, but they'll set the agenda in the first meeting of the fall, October usually, and they'll decide as a group what they want to focus on. And it's great for new members to get feedback from other districts, especially the big districts, you know, really interesting stuff. Great. It goes to the chairs of the committee, correct? Because I that? don't usually send, they usually ask me for the chairs and then it goes through that for the round table. That doesn't usually change. Can you, can you link us? Can you send us? Yeah, we'll be sure you get yeah. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, I, the there next time I get an ed code email, weeks, right? I can forward it to everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'm not on that distribution. Yeah, no, I, really can, only goes to I can forward it to you, and then you I need to just no. sign up, you know, email them back and say, can you add me to this list? Right. Um, so next time I get one from them, I'll just forward it on. Um, uh, Go ahead. FinCom and Pris Observer, that's basically going to FinCom meetings. Um, and uh, and that's, it actually, just, sorry, I jumped in. We'll need one for Concord and one for Carlisle FinCom, so it's two different yeah. FinComs. Yeah. Yeah. And the meetings this time of year are about once a month. Um, but you, if you're the observer to this, when we get into budget season, it's pretty much weekly. <laughs> so um, we can... You know, on any, especially the observer <coughs> positions, I think it's important to try to make an effort to go. Uh, ideally, that yeah. consistency is important. If you can't go, I would ask that we this year try to you know, line somebody else up sure. to go and that we be willing to share in this. Because it can get to be, you know, we, we have a lot of meetings ourselves. Uh, these are a lot of meetings that so the select board can meet every week uh, through various periods of the of the year. It's, if they're like us, they're going to meet every two weeks. And they can be long meetings. So uh, what we've tried in the past is splitting up the, the, the two chairs, alternate the select board. Um, that hasn't worked particularly well. So I think we, we but I, I think for the select board, it probably would make sense to have uh, rotating uh, approach among two people. We might even want to do that with FinCom. Um, but those two in particular, we want to make sure we're trying to get to. Because it's an early read for us on uh, things that are going on in the community that might affect us. And it's an early read on uh, how the FinCom is thinking about things. And it also can be helpful, <coughs> and you need to be prepared for this for the observer. Uh, sometimes it would be. You know, asked questions. Sure. Um, 
and you know you're at that point speaking for the committee um, and so you kind of need to be up to speed on what's going on that, that they might care about so um, <clears throat> so that's that one the peg advisory board uh, is the CCTV it's advisory it's board no longer, no longer. Uh, now it's the peg advisory board and that's the uh, actually I'm going to turn that over to court as well uh, this is a uh, select board advisory board with a school committee uh, member and it typically meets monthly uh, Wednesday mornings at the present time looks at uh, how the, uh, the resources being <coughs> used uh, what the uh, funding implications are present and future and uh, certainly lots of opportunity to look for the school tie-ins with, uh, with community television. Did I get it, Carla? I think we're changing to Wednesday evenings, perhaps. Um, okay, so, okay. got it, thank you. That's good to know, thank you. Um, so, policy subcommittee, where, where are we on going through <laughs> the policies? We took a hiatus on the policies for a couple of reasons, as people who were supporting me and Mary weren't available, so, um, we're not that far from done. We're in the thick courts been there this year. We're in the thick of the big student section, and then we have um, section I to do after that. My concern is that the process started five years ago, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're going to have to loop back. So um, mm -hmm. it's going to be a year-long commitment. I had some great momentum going, and then, it, then I lost it. So. <laughs> As a committee, I think we have to decide what the goal is for next year. Certainly the goal is to finish getting all the way through. Yeah. I think then we need to talk on what the next steps are and figure out what our sustainable cycle is so that we're staying current. I know David and I talked about Carlisle's trying different things. I haven't been, met a school committee yet who's got this totally figured out. So I think the subcommittee model is a, an effective model. So let's appoint people and then the committee can work with can figure out what to do with it. Yeah. And that typically meets once a month. Yeah, we were really basing it on the availability of the people who were coming mm -hmm. um, during the day, usually, get our calendars out, and right. sometimes once a month, we were trying for twice for a while. The, the then, sheer number of policies suggests yeah. this thing, uh, this committee is yeah. not going to go away. No, uh, I think it's and, a standard. Yeah, and, and my surprise was the black and white clarity of a singular policy no. was never black and white as soon as we looked at how yeah, it connected right. with yeah. others, and then suddenly the work was pretty, right. uh, pretty time consuming. Yeah. So, okay, we talked about the select board. Um, Why don't you nominate? Youth Advisory Council. Is that still oh, active? CC at Play, we're crossing out. Just yeah. to uh, they're, they're still exists, but they're not particularly active. Youth Advisory Council? This was oh, no, the use of this was CC at Play. Oh, 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 I see, okay. Youth yeah. Advisory was a town right. driven. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that they are. I will double. I'll find out. I don't think. I'll confirm. I don't okay. think. We lost the youth services coordinator. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Fine. It's sort of dormant. We yes. didn't check it. Then. So three or four years ago, I think it was three years ago, we formed the, the town formed the financial audit advisory committee, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the purpose is to um, to sort of accept and reflect on the on the town financials the enterprise funds um, and the schools. The schools came to it a year after it started. Um, I have been on that since it started. Um, I, uh, we have to be, we have to appoint somebody to it and then you, you know, you, you mm -hmm. get appointed, you keep enough to get sworn in. Is that the um, Youth Advisory Council? No, 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 the Financial the, Audit oh, Advisory Council. Financial Audit, oh, Audit, the FAC, that's okay. what I refer to. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I was hoping to hand that off to Bob. Um, <laughs> so, um, but somebody... Well, I typically wouldn't meet. It's a, day. It's a morning, yeah. usually it's, uh, I think it's 8 o'clock, typically it's an hour and a half. It's not a heavy lift, it's once, it's four times a year, basically. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a worthwhile endeavor. Um, is this select board driven? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mike has been the chair of it. Mike Lawson has been the chair of it since it started. Um, both he and I are off park committees at the end of the year, so um, I think we should probably think about having somebody new okay. go to that this year. 
So I'll be thinking about that. Um, the League of Women Voters Education Committee, I've never served on that. That tends to meet once a month. Um, they have an education committee that's regular attendees tend to be between five and eight people and discuss various educational things. Good, interesting discussions happen there. It's been a great experience actually being part of it this year. Uh, Comprehensive Long Range Planning Committee is no longer, that's been disbanded. We produced a long range plan last year. Uh, CPAC is, uh, that's an important uh, committee to participate in. For those who don't know the history of this, our CPAC actually sort of lapsed for a while. Um, and then uh, I think the first year I was on the committee, yeah. it got uh, resurrected. And um, it's worth mentioning that there are a number of these sorts of parent council type groups that are struggling with finding members. Um, so I, I have taken, whenever I get a chance to say something to somebody who has an ax to grind in either a school or, or a CPAC that, you know, think about volunteering. Um, and I think it's something we'll probably mention from, from here uh, to the television audience. Um, but PTGs, CPAC, they're all, we had our meeting with them uh, Monday and everybody is everybody is uh, struggling with uh, having members so, um, but so this public is, announcement your PTGs need you yeah. so uh, that's what uh, CPAC is uh, Do you differentiate between regional and CPAC is it Concord or regional? No the CPAC actually supports both right now and so League of Women Voters that's, uh, that's a Car Carlisle so it's regional as well. It's regional as well, exactly. The, the organization is Concord Carlisle. Right, exactly. CPAC supports both. Their official name is the Concord and Concord Carlisle Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And the, so it supports both. the financial audit advisory? Concord. Concord. That's just Concord. Concord. Mm -hmm. When does CPAC typically meet? Daytime. Um, uh, alternating. Sometimes daytime, sometimes evening. Does they have they even set that? What's that? Have they even set that yet? I don't, I haven't seen a schedule for the next year. year. Um, in the past, the meetings have alternated between morning and evening. I think their current chair is... Carol Yeo is their current chair. <coughs> um, so, uh, Carlisle, uh, Borsluck, and Finance Observer. Do you have somebody from your committee who does Observer? Or Not really. We. First of all, I, the committees are run differently. I mean, we don't, we wouldn't show up to those meetings unless we were on the agenda particularly. <laughs> we might do advocacy, not in the regular meeting. I think more importantly, and not mentioned here, but you know, is the, the budget process yeah. internally. Right. And once that's set, socializing that. <laughs> it's really the, the way that they run those meetings, there's not, there's not typically the opportunity to socialize it in the meeting unless you're on the agenda. Correct. I agree with and you. And there's not, and there's not uh, a lot you're going to learn about all the minutiae that they work with that's going to be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. So I heard what you said, but for us, we would never spend time on that. Mm -hmm. okay. We would spend yeah. our effort making sure we have a good budget yeah. and working with and getting on the agenda. The FinCom, well, before you get on the agenda, yeah. you know, make sure working that they're part of the first. process yeah. and that they understand what's going on and if there are particular challenges. Then yes, asked to be on the agenda to prep those challenges. Yep. I mean, um, BOS I can't really speak to, or you call it select board, we call it board selectmen, but because they can't, they cover so much stuff. Right. Yeah. The um, FinCom has a defined schedule, and so you know when stuff's coming out. Right. So you need to advocate uh, before guideline because you don't want to get surprised by a bad guideline because right. that's a bad place to be. Right. right. You really want to socialize what you before need before the guideline. Before the guideline. So that's point one. If you do that well, then you've got another inevitable round mm -hmm. where they're looking to cut right. in January or February, and you got to be part of that. So there's there's active periods, but generally speaking, it's not a regular. Okay. That's but I think we've I mean. got we've started. I agree with everything you just said. I think we yeah. started in a nice cycle with the Carlisle leadership of meeting with them before the guideline, and they're always questioning when 
when Concord's doing things too. So we're right. before the guideline in both places, go back after the guideline starts to come out over here. You know, I think we actually are starting to get a nice flow. Um, yeah, there is, I want to use this opportunity to pitch something that we used to do in the old days, and I've been trying to bug our town manager to resuscitate, and I don't think there's been a reception at the Concord level, but a chairs meeting, and I don't no, mean you're big you talked about it, chairs you're, meeting, you're completely right. But you're getting the chairs of yes. Carlisle, uh, Fincom, Carlisle mm -hmm. Selectman, you know, us guys, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and not the chairs of, you know, the rec con. I mean, not right. me, just the yes, chairs of really now. The, get the that going ones, early yeah. Yeah. because one thing that I've observed, and this is a Carlisle observation more, but the alignment between like Carlisle, so Carlisle Fincom and Concord Fincom hasn't been very good lately. Mm -hmm. right, right. And this whole idea that you'd come up with one number, we can, you just it's not good, it's not good. The, they should be all moving towards the same objective and when the guideline comes out or when the budget comes out, there shouldn't be a asymmetry between the view of the two boards. I right. mean, we're the minority and so we can't, really do much anyway, but other than be amused by the, uh, you know, antics that go on south of us. Which, which I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> so, really, you know, to me, it, to me it needs to be refunctionalized, and my suggestion, and, and most of you, I think, know this, but I was on Carlisle Fincom for nine years before I was on uh, the education board. So, I mean, I've got a lot of I'm speaking from years of experience, and I'll just give you one anecdote, which is in 08 when it was the bad time and we really didn't have any money. And my daughter, who's gonna go to high school next year, was like three, cute as a button. I would actually bring her, I went to all the <laughs> Concord FinCon meetings to advocate, and I had nothing to go on, because they could tell me to get lost. I'd bring her, just because she was so, there were tense meetings, and she was so, like, cute. That, you know, people would, would like, oh, you know. So, Did it work? Yeah, well, it, worked, no. it sort of worked, but my point is that. Um, the Everybody, fun. find a cute kid, bring him to the big office. Yeah. <laughs> but we were working hard in those days, because we had to, to try to line everybody up so that whatever the increase was you know it was already pre-socialized both ways and we would have we were also planning on building at that point the school building and so there was a need to get together but you know it was really how I felt it was helpful and I would be happy if we could uh, Rejuvenate it's, that. It started to get some momentum this budget cycle. Um, yeah. I think it never got to execution, so I think we should yeah. bring it but back up because sure. I, it's a good that would be more idea. useful than sending somebody to the yeah. Okay, yeah. that's great then. What, yeah. what a, basically, this is here for whatever needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as liaisons to the to the Carlisle yeah. powers that be, so, um, and then the CMS school building committee. Yeah, um, and, uh, and the budget <laughs> <Yeah. cycle. laughs> CMS. And I think we're leaning toward, we, we now have two slots for school Yes, we now have two slots officially. Which is great, because it started out as one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so thank you to the select board for that. Yes. And we're thinking Heather and Court. So this that. one, actually, um, I said we weren't going to choose, but this one we need to choose tonight to let the select board know, because they want to finish nominating members. Um, so this one, I, I do we know anything about scheduling? However, we don't know about scheduling yet. I'm gonna bet it's Wednesday. I wouldn't be surprised if it would be Wednesdays because Maybe Monday select FinCom. board, Tuesday school committee, and Thursdays FinCom. <laughs> so we proceed. Yeah. Um, so I would make a motion. But who knows? I'd make a motion that we appoint uh, either Bob and Court Booth uh, as our representatives to the CMS School Building Committee. Second. Any discussion? Happy to do it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and thank you. It's kind of, thank you for everything you've done so far. It's <laughs> just getting stuck. <laughs> right. um, oh, wait. Can we do, can I we have to take that motion. Yeah, That's only a motion. Motion. Well, that's true. I would take a motion to. Well, I mean, oh, you, you know, you have to ask for Is there a second? Oh, yeah, a second. Yeah, okay. Everybody, okay. all in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Can you? All right. Add, so it's going to be like that, huh? Yeah. Folks, <laughs> <laughs> so, step it on my turf. <laughs> all right, we got more. Yes. So, so, so there are things to add here. Yeah. So um, one thing before we get to that, I just want to make sure budget subcommittee yes. is something yes. else yes. Yeah. Um, that we created last year. It was very mm -hmm. successful. Um, so that's on here. In that? 
What's that? Who were the members last year? Um, uh, I, Heather and I. And Christine. And, uh, Christine. Okay. So we have an ideal, I think that's a good mix. Yeah, um, it was good to have Concord two Concord and one Carlisle. So just a question, because <laughs> we ran into the, uh, you know, the open meeting law with regard to subcommittees, right? Because we, we um, I personally really did it, because I created the, inadvertently created a subcommittee, which I had to back away from. Oh, right, because then you have a quorum of your school committee. No, it's not a quorum. Uh, it's two. just an open meeting. Anything with two is, yeah. a, is an open meeting. Yeah, and these are open. And how do you do that? How do you have a group we post them and we run them as open meetings. Yeah. But how do you run a bunch of process in open meeting? That's the thing. I <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It, it, I mean, is that the way you a, want to do it? It was a learning process. Is that the way you want to do it? So it's, wait, it's a very good question. We had a, there is a good question. We had a lot of discussion about this. Mm -hmm. um, because you're right, all of a sudden, you. You can't, can't have the real, you can't, can't do have all the, de right, you can't be completely in the weeds constantly right. in an open meeting. That can't be the only way that you're working on the budget. Mm -hmm. um, however, it became a very useful vehicle to kind of do more regular and public updates on what was going on with the budget. It kept, it helped us to keep the finance committee more in the loop. Um, and anybody else who was interested. So it ended up kind of a, a good communication vehicle, as well as a place to ask more detailed questions. So three of us were there asking a lot more questions, and the three of us had a great feel for what was in that new zero-based budget. Um, and it became a communication vehicle. Now, to your point, that's not the only place you're working on the budget. Um, well, in particular, the, I mean, the single largest line item is teacher salaries right. through the negotiation process. Yeah. That's a separate issue. Well, and not a separate yeah, and, issue. Well, how can it be a separate issue when it's like 75% of the budget? Well, the, the, that, to, to be, to be well, the, there's a differentiation here a little bit. This committee is really more about the current budget. It's about the budget we're in. So it's, you know, we're getting updates, we're talking about it's some both. of that. And really it's more about the process of the upcoming budget versus the nitty gritty of the upcoming okay. budget. Um, okay. And uh, so that, at least that's what we did this past year. Okay. And, you know, I think it, it worked pretty well because so much, I mean, a lot of what's happening in the current fiscal year budget informs yeah. the process for the next year's budget anyway. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, there's conversation. Um, but um, it's, you know, that, that seemed to be, because we had these conversations when we formed this committee. Um, and initially the thought was, oh yeah, this would be great to do. And then we realized, well, we can't do that. So, um, you know, we've, we've really kind of gone more to the you know, chairs being involved in that. Right. Yeah. Discussion. Right. So the each chair of chair each being committee involved with right. the administration. That's exactly not used to that point. Yeah. Right. So the chair of each committee is still very involved in discussions right. around the budget. So this is an which can be more ad hoc because you don't have to post a public meeting. Right. This is an opportunity for the for the school committee to have more in depth discussion than we would want to have here. Exactly. Right. Okay. That's right. About what's going on. And so the, it's a good point though because although Wally and I did it last time, it would not make a lot of sense for both of us to continue, it will be three new people, yeah. but um, it, at least two of those, if not all three, should be new because Wally and I each as chairs are gonna be talking That's not with two part. Laurie and Jared regularly about that particular, right, each of our particular budget anyway. Yeah. Um, so be thinking about that if you're interested yeah. in the budget subcommittee, that and we need some people to jump into that. Or that, uh, that well, we, at least it. last so, year, you get to set it. Last year we did it daytimes and kind of picked times that worked for everybody. Okay. Um, right. We try to, I mean, when we can, we want to try to keep thing, extra things to daytime just so we're, we're not keeping Laurie and Jared here for another evening meeting. Um, but, you know, daytime could be 9 a.m., it could be 4 p.m., okay. right? it could be whatever works for that yep. group of people. Yep. 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 Um, so then other suggestions were the Recreation Committee. You had brought that up. Commission. As, commission, called. sorry. Um, as they don't a, meet very often. But I think it's important. Uh, I know. I'm not, I know there's probably off frequent communication. Uh, yes, we are in much but, closer communication. Um, just because of many reasons, the BD Center. You know, they're running the after-school programs. 
on and off. Right? Yep, just to have an observer there. They're so. actually they were here yesterday because they're starting yeah. to run some of our uh, <coughs> extracurriculars at the elementary schools. They've and I like taken to see over uh, all the tightening that up a little. I looked at other towns. There seem, there seem to have a in school much more robust programs that we have. I'm not. No, there's a whole that. conversation to be had there. <laughs> so we had so anyway. with them yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, just it's a good. They don't meet yeah. very often. In fact, they didn't yeah. meet from January to May. Okay. <laughs> so that was not intended. I don't think. But right. It's not a. I think five times a year kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Good. And then you suggested the climate. Which which climate one? Climate Action Advisory Board. I looked it up. Okay. Um, they're a big committee. They're right. Nick. Pappas is a current yep. chair. Yep, we know them. Well. And you were there one yes. night. And uh, yes. so I think it's, they don't, particularly the ones that don't get recorded, where I think they make oh, many right. references to school activities. Mm -hmm. They're concerned about the schools and climate action. And I think it's important that we're there to hear what those conversations are like. Yep. That kind so of dovetails with the sustainability committee of it yep. as well. Yeah, so, right. so then the other ones you're in. Yeah. Tuesdays. I created, uh, I have two committees that are advising right now, which are, you know, school committee representation, teachers, community members, right. um, et cetera. So the sustainability group, both are meeting four times a year and both ended up at the late afternoon hour after teachers could come. Mm -hmm. So. 3, 45, 4 o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Four times a year. Okay. Um, sustainability, and then the other one is the safety and security. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought Okay. So what those what is the status of the uh, Town of Concord facilities group or committee or... They're discussing uh, it with June 11th. Yes. Yeah, we've been invited so to the meeting on June... So I think we just pencil June. that in on our list oh, yeah. for now. 17? Uh, discussion yes. at the select board level. Um, Finco oh, yeah, yeah, is of a town wide facility. So let's, let's keep that on our agenda. Right. 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 that last round. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's not on here, and I'm not exactly sure where we really stand on it, but we haven't disbanded the campus oh. committee, the regional yeah. campus committee. Okay. I don't think we did. I thought we had. But anyway, I guess the question, we can check the formality of it. The question is, what's the need? Yeah. Um, right. We is do have a pretty big dang we do have a thing. Question mark <laughs> out there. <laughs> I mean, there are, oh, wait, there what's probably, that big elephant? Yeah. There are enough there. things that, you know, between, the, you know, I mean, all of the work they did identified things and made recommendations, but they're all still in play. Very much so. Part. And I guess the question is whether the committee the big committee needs the subcommittee, or are we just are we at this level now? We've got the we've got a lot of information to work with. Are we Do just we need decisions? a subcommittee, or are we just revisiting decisions here? Yeah, that's probably I, worth just us putting on an agenda, agenda. Yeah. and discussing parking. what our next steps should parking be. Parking and paving, and <laughs> right, a few other paving, things. And, uh, amenities building. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, we should talk here. Just to get we should talk here and figure it out. If yeah. we realize that we need a subcommittee to look into something, okay, we can create it. But yeah, I think, I we mean, have I a lot of information. I think you've already done the homework. The philosophy is, you know, you got a, you got a Concord issue, and then you have a Carlisle issue. Yeah. So, right. I mean, yep. getting sort of that line. I know. I, yep. I don't want to speak to your Concord issue. Right. Enough of that going on. But from our end, I mean, that the only the only place where I've mentioned this to well. The only place that Carlisle has any real leverage is on capital projects. <laughs> Just remember that. And there's a lot of people up there that say, okay, mm -hmm. say, I have leverage. Let's use our leverage. <laughs> yes. So just, I'm not taking That's a position. I'm just very good insight. Think about, think about that as you, as you think about that issue. I, we were there a lot, I would say. I'm not surprised to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So there are um, 17 there, committees here. Um, quick question. Yep. Yeah. The Climate Adva Advisory Board? That's Concord. That's, yeah, that's Concord. That's CCHS only, right? No. So there's no, a Concord. Mostly uh, the, uh, dealing with the school in no. terms of climate advisory? No, there's a town. Concord has a Climate Action Advisory Board that's not school related. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's just a town committee. But because they tend to look into a lot of things that are climate related and sometimes bring up things, that relate to the schools. Right. Cynthia was suggesting we should have someone there as an observer just so we know what's going on there. 
And those things that relate to the schools, is it generally CCHS or other schools? No. Could be any of them. Could be all of them. Right now, the middle school is a, will come up a lot because of the fact okay. that we're in the design process and there's a lot of discussion around sustainable design, right. obviously. Right. Um, but issues, but definitely the high school plays into, you know, mm -hmm. the high school comes up also, but all of the schools can come up. Yes. Heather, why don't you do some house cleaning? I mean, the, 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 the few that we all know what we want, maybe we should get them completely open. Well, I think, I think it would still be, there. I just did a little math here. There's 17 of these committees. Um, some of them I think we're, we'd like to, I even as we were sitting here th wondering if we ought to rotate uh, these observer roles for the FinCom and select board among all five of us, mm -hmm. rather than try to pick two people who have to go to them. Um, sure. But we can talk about that. Uh -huh. um, the and nine of them are joint are things that are really have a joint characteristic to them. Um, so you know that boils down to somewhere in the vicinity of three apiece. Um, is that right? Yeah, it's two and a half a piece. Um, so I think it probably easier than just trying to do that here. It would be better if you think about, you know, sort of give us five that you're interested in, in an order of preference kind of thing. Sounds good. Um, and, uh, and we'll and try to come yeah, back. Let's do that. And those that you really know to Especially as new members, yeah. you really don't want to do, especially as new members, you should identify them. Right. Yeah. So. Um, also, what would be really helpful is daytime versus evening preferences, and hopefully this balances out. Mm -hmm. I'll throw it out there for now. Yeah, I have small kids, so for me, evening meetings are really hard, and I'm already going to have gonna these say, and the building committee, yeah. mm -hmm. which is going to be another evening. So I am going to try to avoid at all costs any other evening ones. I was just saying to Wally. I literally could not walk home tonight and say I was the select board observer. I would get kicked out of my house. So we all have to balance that way, right? But I will take daytime ones because I can do those. So hopefully other people will say, oh, daytimes are terrible. I can do evenings. And, and those preferences, whether you, know, you want to throw it out there, but at least send it to us with your first choices so that we can differentiate. What, what I'd like to do is send to you what you, one of you send to us by way of a new list. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. So yes, we're yes. working off the same slate. Yeah, we'll do that. I can take okay, the back because I'm already on that committee anyway. Which one? Setback. CFAC. Yeah, oh, great. Good. Okay, good. And you go there. So you can answer. You can Wonderful. Right That's already done. Okay. Wonderful. We do have to have Someone probably some what we did last Concord. year. Christine was the official rep, mm -hmm. and I was kind of a backup for anything that was just Concord related. Okay. So someone else it doesn't have to be me, but somebody else maybe from Concord can be a backup for Concord issues. But that's terrific. Okay. okay. Good. Other ones send us to us. I, I see your point to you all about we could hash out some, but it's getting late. I think we want to move yeah, on. Let's, so uh, let's try to move this move along this if we can. Yeah. Um. I wanted to take the, oh, I guess it's a Norwegian thing. Uh, bus depot operating costs. Um, what you have on the agenda is a letter that came to uh, the chair of the regional committee in 2012 when we were considering the building of uh, the depot, and uh, which we did do. Um, we never have really formalized the What's identified in here is uh, a willingness to share in operating costs. Uh, and so we've decided to go down that road and uh, need to come up with you know, what that plan looks like. So, uh, Yeah, you know, right now, Congress paying the operating costs and the capital costs. Um, and since there is documentation that Carlisle had intention to pay some operating costs, uh, I think through the budget process last year, it was clearly mentioned as a priority test from the Concord Finance Committee and right. such. I think we're going to need discussion on the vehicle of how we do this um, because it's essentially got to go through the assessments. So if we put it through the regional budget, then the question becomes Carlisle just pays its portion of the operating cost that way, but is Concord going to pay itself? Right. becomes the circle we've got to undo there. So 
what works for one community doesn't work for the other. So we just got to navigate some logistics. You all need to be part of that. We need to put some numbers in front of you so you can understand <coughs> what kind of impact this will have. I think tonight we're just sort of looking for a timeline of when we wanted to do this and what steps to take next. I, yeah. I, I sorry. Yeah. No, I thought you don't understand something, but I sure. thought you don't understand something. Yeah. So until now, in those years, Kala is not paying anything for the transportation? They are paying, no, Kala no, is transportation for the buses okay. and the drivers and the gas and all of that. So what's the operation? It's about the bus depot itself, the building oh, right. and the lights and the heat and the right. operating costs of the depot building. Right. So it's, not, it's not a huge there. number. It really isn't a huge factor. number. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It's Carl, charging Sparky. The letter you right. have is goes back to, you know, kind of long simmering yeah. dispute between the towns in terms of Carlisle's always outsourced its busing. It's a bit self right. <laughs> right. 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 Um, So I want to ask then, Jared, I guess, uh, not clear on, the depot is not full, because you take transportation which has a K through 8 and a 9 through 12 component and you do some algorithm that figures out what the allocation is yeah. and then the piece that's regional you give us our share right right so why is why is not the depot kind of managed that forget the allocation to Carla why isn't it folded into the school budget what's different about it, it go ahead well it's not it's, well, I'm wrong um, so it's a, it's a town building. Okay. So right now the way that the, the really everything, the formula we use, everything is a 60-40 split for the most part when it comes to K through eight yeah. being the 60% okay. and nine through 12 being the 40%. Yeah. Of that 40%, yeah. all the operating costs yeah. are go through the assessment and yeah. roughly 24.75% is Carlisle share and the rest is Concord's. That's the bus. The running of the buses. Right. Right. The Maybe. running of the yeah, building so is not true. So the building opened, so despite the 2012 date on there, the building opened in August of 2017. <laughs> and it just hasn't actualized to how the operating costs are going to be managed now that the building's online. Okay. So it, that's the discussion. It doesn't, that building doesn't do anything but take care of the buses. No, nothing else. It doesn't else. have a different purpose. No, no. no. So it, it should be. Count. So is that a budget thing that Concord's going to do this year? Or are they going to move well, I think that's the timing we wanted to talk with you all on and talk on process a little bit. And we need to give you a strong recommendation on what the <laughs> fiscal process that's appropriate to this would be. And we can see there's going to be a little bit of discussion needed at a couple of different places just because of bureaucracy, frankly. So, yeah. I think from a timing, st timing right, standpoint, it would be ideal to get this resolved before budget season. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So if we could sort of knock this off in September, it'd be ideal. Okay. So the thing from, I mean, I'd certainly, speaking for Carla, I don't have an objection to shouldering our fair share of the thing. The thing I would, you should be mindful of in the Concord side is something that we're going through right now with the FinCom where they're, they're starting to push stuff into our operating budget that was yeah. treated differently before. And without going to specifics, what they're doing is they're shifting the cost that they absorb into your budget. The pot is the same at the end, yeah. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. other than the con yeah. Carl will take a piece of it, but it will make your increase, like we were talking about your E and D, right? It makes you look like you have a higher right. increase, and you want to again when we talk about positioning and advocacy, yeah. you want to get that really, in my opinion, you want to get it granular and say, okay these X dollars you already were paying for. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact that you moved it from the left pocket to the right pocket and actually look at your increase and adjust it down as an effective increase and make them aware of that. Right. Because they will totally forget that. Yeah. And everybody say, oh, it's a 5% increase. Like, what are you guys doing over there? Right. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, look at the town. They're down 3%. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. right, exactly. And so I'm, town must be yeah. saving money. Right. So that just that would be That's a good point. Answer. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, aim on, we'll work on that over the summer bring you recommendations. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, uh, middle school building update, I can keep very yes. quick. Don't worry, we're gonna, not gonna go into details. Um, there isn't much new, as you know, the election is scheduled for June 4th. The latest from the select board is that they approved the charge um, that they have been discussing. As we know, we now have two people assigned to it. Um, 
they are continuing to take volunteers to the building committee and uh, the last I heard, I need to confirm this is still the plan, but the last I heard um, at the next select board meeting, which is next Monday night, they will complete their nominations to the select board. And then on June 3rd, their meeting after that, they will seat the, sorry, building committee, did I say select board? They will seat the building committee June 3rd. That's the night before the election, um, which is really, I think, great forethought on the part of uh, the select board because they want to just set it up so that it's teed up and ready to run if everything passes at the polls. So what they have said is if the election, if the question fails at the election, they will tell everybody on the building committee, thank you anyway, go home. Um, but it'll be ready to go just in case. And they increase the number of public uh, Yes, thank you. The number of public residents, really just to make sure the committee had an odd number, they increased the number of um, resident volunteers from five to six. And then there's still an, addition, an, an additional resident volunteer with uh, expertise in so sustainable building. Total so it's a total of seven, with, with at least one of them yeah. with sustainable build building okay. practice expertise. And at least one with kids uh, in yes. a school, or school age children. Mm -hmm. um, and as well as other other positions on the committee. But with a total number of 17. Total Correct. number of 17. An now. odd number. Yep, to make it an odd number. Um, Good. That's it. That's the that's the quick version. Okay, action items. Uh, we've done the first one. Um, I so can talk on the staff. Talk about staff. Sure. So, per the contracts, uh, staff are entitled to bring their stu their children to the schools. We have a unwritten agreement for Carlisle teachers to also enroll their it's children. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's long-standing practice. Okay. We can talk on that further, but it is unwritten. Um, Carlisle teachers have been allowed to, uh, granted the opportunity to bring their children over if they've come up through Carlisle. Right. Because it's a stand, it's in Carlisle's contracts to bring their children. And we've had a long-standing practice of allowing Carlisle teachers to continue their kids up to the high school. So it's a pretty extensive list this year. I'll let you read through. We've got, um, a good, num good number of kindergartners coming in and a few other requests as well. Um, little tidbit on the elementary age kids, because of the where enrollments are right now, if they have siblings, the kids have been going to Alcott, staff kids, so if they have siblings already there, they'll go to Alcott, sure. but any oldest children that are just coming in are going to go to Willard from here on. So, because so I... The Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have about a 60 student difference in those two schools mm -hmm. right now. So. so the practice had been most kids were at Alcott. Yeah, so... Um, it was it's just about numbers. I it's think always about numbers. I think it switched probably five years ago. It had right. been Willard so for a while. Alcott. I mean, it used to be Willard. It right. used to be Alcott Willard. Right. And, yeah. and then Alcott Alcott was Alcott's Alcott. bubbled right. and Willard's dropped. And so we're going to shift them back over towards Willard. Yeah. Um, so this is standing practice to uh, accept them every spring and you accept them once and then they they stay right on through. And, uh, so I'll make a motion forward. to approve staff requests for children to attend CCHS and CPS. No, uh, there's actually motion language here. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, well, Sorry. I'll, just, I'll do the concrete one. I'll yeah, I, for some reason, I, I can't okay. access, okay. for some reason I'm not sure. It's so, two so motions so actually. So I, I, I make a you motion. Yeah, uh, you make a motion if Concord committee, did the Concord School Committee vote to approve the request of Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Rakai, Mr. Robbins, and Ms. Brown to enroll the child in the Concord Public School and that tuition be, we will be waived. Second. Good. Any further discussion on that? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Welcome, Aye. children. I would entertain a motion that the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee vote to approve the requests of Ms. Graham and Mr. Lonegren to enroll their child in the Concord Carlisle High School and the tuition be waived. Second. He said he would accept a motion. That needs to be moved. Oh, moved. So moved. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, just a point of grammar. Should be their children. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and on the prior one as well. But I couldn't speak for Concord. Yeah. <laughs> they have a strict grammar. grammar uh, Dave, you're correct grammar. Right. grammar. right. Any Our new grammatical expert. expert. You're the only one that is not English speaker. Is that, is that, is that so. a form of an amendment? 
<laughs> we will change that language uh, in the final results of the minutes. Um, I don't think you took a vote. I didn't, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm Aye. sorry, I thought you were a little vote. Um, so next is... Um, the, uh, I do we need to talk about this at all? The Japan trip. Why don't I make a motion first? I'll move that the Carter Carlisle School Committee vote to give David Nuremberg permission to begin planning the 2019-2020 Japan trip. Second. Any discussion? Yes, thank you. Uh, nothing, not specific about this request, but I think that in the future it would be nice if all the trips would be brought to us at once, so we can have the bigger picture. I will try my best. <laughs> uh, that's part of the big picture discussion we need to have because they trickle into us. Um, so I will certainly, I'm working on it, I will make a concerted effort to get this a little more organized. And that's consistent with what came up earlier. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, one of the things that some of these trips take a little longer to plan than others, and yep. Japan is typically one of them. So we always hear about that really early, but yes, I don't disagree. Uh, so may I have a motion? Oh, I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, seven. Uh, and, uh, I'll entertain a motion that the Concord oh, Carlisle School Committee votes to approve the CCHS trip to Germany for June 12th through 20, uh, 2019 through June 20th, 2019, with the condition that a signed liability waiver is received from all participants. So moved. So second. second, you should have had this one earlier. I'll just acknowledge that. So that's part of that big picture. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any discussion? Yeah, just curious. I mean, that's like coming up. You, yeah, I, I, I we, have really, we have really struggled with getting them to this committee in a timely way. So Mike and I have got to sit. I think I need face-to-face -face meetings with the staff is probably the answer there. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys must be already signed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, but it's, it, it, <laughs> yeah, no, I totally I agree. Would not, I, I would not totally suggest agree. to stop it, but to bring it to us yeah. is a total fait accompli after it's totally paid. Totally agree. Oh, it's not the right. I completely mm -hmm. agree. So I think I need some face time at the high school is probably part of it. It's, a message we've sent, but we need to do it in person and stress. Um, I did turn down a domestic trip that was coming. They didn't get it to us in time, and we didn't have a meeting planned, and I just said sorry. So I think we're going to I'm just going to have to take a harder line on the planning mm -hmm. timelines. Yeah. These are yeah. part of Q5, right? Especially this these foreign is, trips. This or, Germany so one these is. are known about. Yep. So mm -hmm. you're, you're taking this uh, responsibility, but I still think it's worth asking the question, what could have gone uh, differently on the, uh, the the teacher admin end at the high school? We need to make a solid plan over there right now. The teachers are sending my things as they get to it, and I think we have not stressed enough to them the importance of this piece of the process. Um, and I, I've, we've allowed that to be sort of secondhand communication to them, or it's just been an email, and because we approve it anyway, Right. We got to back up and say, from here on, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And here's the timeline, and you've got to hit it. And I turned one down because I didn't have a meeting to even bring it to. Never mind, I didn't have much notice. We just got to tighten the whole thing up and give them notice that it's changing. So if you want us to vote on something that here's a deadline for these, we will not consider them afterwards. Yes, exactly. That would be. And is there a process? There is. Mike has done a good job of at least tightening up the way the forms are done and the information he asks for. We can certainly take feedback from you about what you get when you see it here. Um, up until a year ago, we didn't even have a common form they were coming in on. So we've made progress, but not nearly. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking more about how how expensive. Yeah, no, that pro there, that's part of the work we need to do. Just Teachers are proposing things. They work with an outside company, and they bring us up. I mean, those price. are for profit companies. So, and I understand why they work with them. It's almost well, insurance. Yes. Insurance. No, I know. Really do need them yes. No, I, I get it. But it's but just speaking of part of the big picture. We've got to we've yeah. got to look at it. So, Lori, or really, it's a Jared question. Maybe is are you fully briefed with your agent or your yes, carriers and all that? Yeah. We had a little cleanup to do Especially this fall. Trips, so. We had some cleanup this fall that we took care of. 
Any other comments? Yeah, so questions? As I have kids in high school and they're going on the, some of the Q5 trips. The trip to Germany, uh, I actually learned about it when I was in the presentation in high school months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, we have so a process problem here. I'm not denying that at all. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, so, uh, are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Uh, so the next item is next one. Uh, the to vote to appoint mm -hmm. Ruth Gruby. 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 Yeah. This is director of student services. Do you want to? Yeah, I'd be glad to. About this? So we had a very extensive search for director of student services. This position will um, really meld our director of special ed, which will be still the primary role. Uh, but this person. Ruth uh, will also work with ELL, mental health, the nurses, and the overlapping services that have been splintered throughout the leadership of the district. So we thought for very good reasons we need them because the kids overlap. We need one person overseeing all of that. So through a very extensive and thorough process um, that Kristen Herbert ran, we had a big stakeholder group of about 20 people do the first round of interviews. Uh, they actually screened resumes. Kristen had them in right from the beginning. That, the group actually screened resumes and weighed in on paper. Those candidates then came to a very extensive uh, screening set of interviews, first round of interviews with 20 some stakeholders in the room of all various backgrounds. Staff, parents, all, all very wide range. Um, we then narrowed that down to uh, two finalists. And then the two finalists came in, they did forums with staff and with parents, um, and then they both came back for final rounds with me. Um, and then we had school committee participation also at that point. And um, I have to say the two finalists were both very, very strong and very competent, very capable, and really it, we had the gift of being able to look for fit. And uh, Ruth really rose to what we need in this place and time for culture and connections and um, philosophy and so she's very excited and ready to come work with us um, so we need it is a school committee appointment so I make the recommendation to you um, we've had representation at the table so it's a consensus that this is the right choice uh, I would speak up and say okay. Cynthia and I were both part yeah. of these interviews and I came out and I completely agreed that both of them were great candidates yeah. mm -hmm. and we would have been very lucky to have either and it was truly a matter of which one rose slightly higher in terms of fit. Mm -hmm. And I was completely behind Ruth as the yeah. choice. I thought she was fabulous. Yeah. I'm so excited. I think she'll be a great fit for us. Yeah. 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 Fully supportive. Great. Thank you for all the work you did on this. Yeah. I think Kristen Herbert deserves. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, she uh, sure does. Yes. Our our uh, gratitude for the process, which I thought was very very well conducted. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, of, a lot of the candidates were good, and mm -hmm. the process uh, was very difficult to, uh, to go from eight, what, 18 to 6 to 2 mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. But then, uh, thankfully, those two were so strong that uh, the only difficulty was they were both so strong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big problem. Yes. Yeah. And Court, thank you yeah, for being part of that really big, big time commitment. I, uh, I just I want to commend all of us for. Uh, a continued strong process yeah. in selecting people. Uh, it's transparent and as transparent as it can be. And uh, yeah. and I'm always impressed with the quality of the candidates I get, which speaks to the quality of the district. Yeah. And you know, to my left or to Case shining. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion that the Concord School Committee and the Concord Carlisle School Committee vote to appoint Ruth Kruby as the Director of Student Services. Second. Is that for both committees? Perfect. Oh, yeah, yes, you said it for both. So. Seconded for both? Yes, second for both. Good. So, uh, all the, uh, all those, any further discussion? Further discussion. Uh, all those for Conquer Carla in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And everyone in favor for Conquer? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right.
Let's appoint Ruth Groovy. We're done. Oh, there go. Very, uh, very excited to have her. Discussion has ended, July 1st? but I'll, I'll note here. Uh, yeah, we don't have a date referenced, and I think that's because you're still working on. I'm it, still right? working yes. with our okay. current district. So uh, the Conquer Carlisle School Committee, that's not what I meant to read. The Conquer, Car the Conquer to Conquer Carlisle School Committees will enter into executive session under Purpose 3 of the Open Meeting Law to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body. <clears throat> then Purpose 2 of the Open Meeting Law <clears throat> to discuss strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel and will not return to open session. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Uh, Second. So um, uh, all those, uh, so, uh, roll, call, right? roll call vote roll call for vote. Uh, Concord Carlisle School Committee. Aye. Aye. John's denied. Aye for both committees. Booth aye for both. It would be high for both. Rainy, high for both. I vote. And my vote was high for both. Uh, we're adjourned. Yeah.